Okay, we're live. This is Mark Diaz Truman and the rest of the Indie Plus crew, who we'll introduce in a moment, uh, here to play Fate Accelerated, uh, the Silicon City setting that can be found at the brand new Fate Codex. Um, so tonight we're going to be uh, playing both Fate Accelerated, showing off the system, showing off what it can do. I, you can tell we were rolling dice before we started because I already have these dice here in my head. Um, and, uh, and just sort of running through a pretty basic uh, situation in the setting. So um, let's introduce ourselves. Brendan, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I'm Brendan Conway. Uh, I have done a few videos for um, What's on the Shelf. I'm on the Indie Plus team, and I like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Chris? Hi, I'm Chris Trigenza. Uh, as well as doing Indie Plus, I do 66 writing and publishing games, and that's what I do all the time. And I sort of like eggs, but I like other stuff more. Okay. Excellent. Rich? Hi, I'm Rich Rogers. I do a number of things. Uh, after this, we will be doing an episode of Splat World, which is a, a completely unauthorized and not terribly intelligent breakdown of the Apocalypse World game and uh, the engine for all the uh, Powered by the Apocalypse, and I do some other podcasts where I talk about games a lot. Good. Rowan? Um, hi, I'm Rowan. Uh, Mark and I are eventually going to do a thing. It's going to be exciting. We're going to talk about stuff. Um, I, uh, I helped out with the harassment policy, and I'm getting involved with Indie Plus uh, more regularly, and I have no opinion on eggs unless they come from Cadbury. And then... And then I think they're really awesome. <laughs> awesome, cool, good. Um, thank you, thank you all for joining. Uh, so I, again, I'm Mark. Uh, I am the publisher of the Fake Codex, uh, which is one of the new projects from Magpie Games, which is one of the things that I do. Um, and this last month, we published our first issue of the Codex, which included a setting called Silicon City. Uh, and Silicon City is, I like to think of it as like almost human meets Dread meets San Francisco, right? So, like, it's it's sort of this, like, totalitarian, post-apocalyptic, uh, but, but, like, made by Apple. So it's kind of friendly, right? Oh, that's awesome. Aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> I think we just lost Mark. I think we did, too. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a very fitting... <laughs> that's a good face, <laughs> though. That's a good face. It's a... There we go. There we go. Did I, did I freeze? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Okay. Let's see. Hold, hold it's okay. It was a good face. It was a good face. I was all like... <laughs> um, where did I get cut off? Uh, Silicon City, combination of Dread, Almost Human, San Francisco, uh, like made by Apple. Cool. Uh, somewhere along there. All right, good. That's the, everybody's good. Um, so the setting in the, in the game is that uh, there's this place called Silicon City. It's sort of like a mega city. Um, I sort of imply that it's like more on the West Coast kind of like tech haven. Um, and the city has, you know, ostensibly some democracy. Uh, there's like a council of elected people who sort of rule uh, with nearly absolute power. Uh, and they have empowered these sort of like super cops, these like archons, to go and solve problems in the city, um, especially because it's like, you know, dangerous and violent and filled with all kinds of technology that, you know, nobody can stop that kind of stuff. And so the players play these archons, these uh, incredibly capable and powerful super cops um, who uh, go in and stop crime in, in Silicon City. Um, and so we're going to go through the fate, the fate Accelerated, modified a little bit to, to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like the regular Fate Core setup in terms of um, creating the setting together. Uh, but we're going to go through uh, a Fate Accelerated game in which you all play archons um, who are who are trying to you know protect the city as best you can. Um, and generally, Archons tend to be relatively good people in the sense that if you're out just for yourself, there's easier ways to do it than, like, decide to be a cop in this really difficult and lawless city uh, filled with, like, high-tech criminals and, and cartels and, and supervillains. So, um, but that's that's the general setup. So questions about the setting before we move on? I mean, that's kind of... I want you all to also participate in creating a good chunk of it. So are there any questions about the basic overview in the genre? How high tech are we talking? Yeah, so uh, generally pretty pretty high. Like uh, definitely science fiction. Uh, you know, I would say I think you know at least you know fifty to hundred years in the future. 
uh, artificial intelligence is pretty common, prosthetic limbs, uh, you know, any number of other cool network devices. Like, uh, and in, in Fate especially, um, creating advantages and creating aspects makes magic and thus incredibly advanced technology pretty easy to do. So if you've got something that you think you want to do with super advanced technology, there's usually a way to do it. Okay. Good. Any other questions? No? Cool. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about Fate Accelerated. So uh, Fate Accelerated is a sort of stripped down to the nuts and bolts version of Fate Core. Um, sometimes people talk about them as separate things, like Fate Core and Fate Accelerated, but really Fate Accelerated is just the most lean version of Fate Core uh, that you could possibly run. And the way it works is you're going to get a couple of aspects, which are things that are true about your character um, that will benefit you uh, or cause trouble for you during the game. So a good example of this is, like, Han Solo uh, would have the aspect smuggler with the heart of gold, right? So, like, there's times where being a smuggler uh, would be helpful to Han, where he's, like, hiding from the stormtroopers uh, on, on the Millennium Falcon when they get captured in, in New Hope. But then when Greedo walks into the bar, the fact that he's the smuggler and he dumped all this cargo is really bad for him. Right? Like it's not it's not so simple. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm a smuggler with a heart of gold, and that's always good. Sometimes it's gonna cause you trouble. Okay? Um, those aspects generally are activated when you spend fate points. So we're gonna give you all some fate points during the game. Uh, if you load up your dice stream app, you should actually be able to add the number of fate points you have up in the top right. Um, so everybody should start with one fate point. So during the game, if you have an occasion in which you can invoke an aspect, like show, you know, add this to the scene, you'll get a bonus by spending your fate point with that aspect. Cool. Aspects are like the core of fate. Like that's like one of the biggest pieces of fate is this idea that your character is built on these uh, like short phrases, uh, smuggler with a heart of gold, right? That that inform us not only about what your character is good at, but what might also cause your character trouble. The flip side of the aspect from the invoke is the compel. It's that moment when you get a fate point from me or from another player uh, in order to have something bad happen to your character. So for example, I would say, okay, Han, you're, you're sitting in the bar, uh, Luke and Obi-Wan leave, and, and then I'd hold out a fate point and say, I'm going to compel your smuggler with the heart of gold aspect to say that Greedo is here, and you screwed over Greedo and his boss, and he's here to collect. Okay? And that, that compel is something that you can turn down but in order to turn it down, you have to spend a fate point. So you can either end up with two fate points by accepting that bad things happen to your character, or you can end up with zero fate points and get out of situations that you don't think would be that interesting or fun. Cool. Questions about aspects? How many do we have? You're going to end up with three for fate accelerator. They're pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. Rich, you had a question too? Yeah. Um... It, are the aspect compels, like, using an aspect uh, that, that always is powered by a fate point? Um, for the most part, yes. Um, at the same time, your aspects are always true. So say you're Superman, you have the aspect last son of Krypton. You don't have to, like, declare that when you fly. Because you're Superman, right? Like, that's just your thing. You fly. Like, Bruce Wayne is really rich, so if you, like, buy a car, you don't have to spend a fate point to buy a car because you're really, really rich. That's your thing. Right? It's when, it's when it comes into the story to help you with a role that you're going to spend the fate point. Okay? It, you can also spend a fate point to declare that something is true using an aspect. So like um, if, uh, if Bruce Wayne wants to have an investment in a company that like Poison Ivy is using, he can say, like, oh, I'm going to spend a fate point. Yeah, I, I have all these investments. I'm really rich. And one of them just happens to be in Poison Ivy's company. Right? And it's more than just saying, oh, it's really rich. I'm really rich, so it makes sense that I would have money on me. It's like, oh, I'm really rich, and here's this very specific setting detail I want to add by spending a fate point. Okay. Did I explain that well, Brendan? Brendan has a ton of probably more fate experience than I do, so did I miss anything? Yeah, no, you, I think you covered it. Okay, cool, good. So let's start with our first couple of aspects, and then we'll go on to the, the other parts of the system. Um, each of you is going to have what's called a high concept. It's basically like, how do we sum up your character in one short phrase? Um, and the high concept doesn't have to be like the most perfectly crafted phrase ever. We're playing a demo game, right? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be the kind of thing where like you have this last son of Krypton perfect aspect. But it's supposed to kind of sum up like, you know, are you a cyborg detective with a, with a dark past or are you, 
you know, a, a lonely cop whose you know, only interest is homicide or something. Right, so let's just, to start off, kind of brainstorm what kind of character do you want to play in this game? Um, what sort of makes them unique and interesting? Why are they a hero, a player character, instead of just one of the many faceless NPCs that are going to wander through Silicon City? Okay? And this process is collaborative, so it's also cool if you're like, well, I have kind of an idea, but I'm not sure where to go with it. It's cool to kind of do that work together. Um, and actually, wait, one more thing before we do that, because I want to I want to get through, we should get through some of the setting creation as well, although we might not do all of it. Um, the setting can have aspects too, right? And those aspects can be invoked and compelled just like every other part of the game. Um, if you have a, an on-fire aspect in a scene, for example, then you can spend a fate point to add that on-fire to your role if it would make sense. You're like, I throw the guy into the fire and spend a fate point. Great, then that will, that will add to your role. Okay? Um, and the setting of Silicon City itself will have two aspects. One of them is the current issue. And one of them is an impending issue. So this is probably the best place for us to start before we go to our aspects. Let's start with the setting aspects. The current issue in Silicon City is defined. Um, it's uh, an epidemic of a particularly noxious drug that's flooding the city. Um, and the drug is called Hydra. Um, and unlike many other sort of drugs that might have run rampant in Silicon City, uh, this drug actually mostly affects very wealthy people. Um, and the reason it does is because uh, Hydra is a drug that's taken by people who like want to get ahead, um, and uh, you you take it and it speeds up like your human cognition and processing, um, and so it's like taken by people who are like financial wizards and high-priced code junkies, right? So if you want to like stay up all night hacking a system uh, for your you know very wealthy boss, then like taking a hit of Hydra is the best way to get there. Um, the problem is, of course, that long-term Hydra use. Uh, tends to turn people into psychopathic serial killers. So they look like normal everyday people, and then one day they go American Psycho and like kill their business partner in like the most horrific way possible. Okay? And the only sort of telltale signs are that your eyeballs get these little like black veins all over them, which is why it's called Hydra. It's the, it has like some technical, you know, pharma, pharmacological name, uh, but in fact it's it's called Hydra by most people because it makes these like crazy like spiral vein. Uh, things on your eyes. Okay? And so you, all the archons in the city know that the current issue that everybody's sort of thinking about is the Hydra epidemic. And with that are a couple of faces, people that you know of that are in, engaged and involved in this particular issue in the setting. The first one is this guy named Drazek. Uh, he's a major supplier of Hydra in the city. And the second one is a woman named Frances Nien. Uh, she's a uh, trying to research a um, cure for the Hydra, like the downsides of Hydra. Um, usually when people like freak out on Hydra, they're called Hydra drones, uh, and she's trying to look for a counter to that particular like affliction so that people don't suffer as much. Okay? Um, and so that's like established in the setting. That's our current issue. But there are two impending issues that the group's going to get to choose from. The first potential impending issue is a, a robot civil rights movement. So the robots in the city, a number of them, are demanding that they receive uh, protections and civil rights, uh, you know, in, in, which would be different from their current status as property within the city. So even though there's artificial intelligence, for the most part, Silicon City regards robots and artificial intelligence as things and not people. And there's a growing movement among free robots, right, to, to try to, um, you know, get their civil rights within the society. Um, and the other impending issue is that there's a Silicon City election coming up, um, and that will that might have impacts on uh, the characters and and other other people that you meet. So I, I'm gonna flip this back to the group. We've defined the current issue for you, but which of the impending issues, which new issue coming into play, seems interesting to the group? Well, for me, I, I just recently watched through the entire series of The Wire, and um, when Carcetti was was going for election um, as mayor, some of the politics that happened there were pretty pretty interesting in how they impacted the police department. So uh, that that one kind of jumps out at me. Plus, it's kind of new and different. Okay, cool. Yeah, the election one jumped out to me because it seemed to follow through more into the uh, from the drugs because the drugs can interplay with the uh, um, election. So yeah, I, I quite like that idea. Cool. Yeah, 
I wasn't particularly snagged by either one, so if other people are feeling the election, I am down with that. Cool. Yeah, I'm good with the election. All right. So this one has a couple of faces as well. The first one is um, Marshall St. John. He's a pro Archon incumbent counselor for District 3. Uh, and so he's somebody that is very uh, protective of Archons and their authority within the city. Um, and then uh, Amaya Carter, who's the political director for St. John's opposition. Okay. Now, each of these probably needs, say, one or two more faces, uh, one or two more characters that you think would be interesting to add to the mix for these particular issues. So does anybody have a character they want to throw out for the Hydra epidemic, like another kind of twist on that story, another, another character that might add something to that? Uh, some sort of um, survivor or bereaved person, someone who's a, a victim of the epidemic but ha it hasn't been taken for drugs. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, like, like maybe somebody who's leading like a Mothers Against Hydra kind of movement. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, does, anybody, can anybody think of a name for this character? Mary Alice Smith. Mary Alice Smith, great. She's an anti-Hydra crusader. Great, wonderful. Uh, what about the election? Another character for the election. How about a reporter of that's some good. kind? Yeah, that's good. Okay. What makes this reporter unique or interesting? Is it like the the best political reporter in the city, like Spider Jerusalem from Trans Trans Yeah. Man? Yeah, I okay, love cool. that. That's awesome. <laughs> good, good. So it's like it's like this like, you know, over the top gonzo, like Hunter S. Thompson kind of like 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 gets to the point, like gets the inside scoop, right? Awesome. Uh, somebody Brennan, you haven't you haven't had anything. Brennan, do you have a name for this character? Um, how about let's see. Gertrude Olympus. Gertrude Olympus, yeah, love it. Great. Okay, cool. So we've got our setting. This is the these are the these are the things that are coming up and the things that are going on and a bunch of NPCs that you could have ties to if you want that can you can bring into scenes if you think they're interesting, um, and we'll see we'll see exactly how they play out. So now that we've got a sense of Silicon City overall, let's talk about your characters. Who are these archons? The, the archons that are going to be the the heroes, the the main characters of our game. Um, and what we want to talk about is not necessarily a high concept yet, but just like you know, some some gist of like how you think that character is going to work and, and what you think that character should be like. So does anybody want to come throw some ideas out there? Does anybody have something that's sort of spoken to them in terms of a uh, of a character that they'd want to play? Brian? No, sorry, I actually just clicked my mouse for no good reason. <laughs> okay, cool. I saw you coming off mute, so I was like, all right, she's ready, right? Cool. Not quite. I, I was uh, thinking of um, some genetically modified, you know, some yeah, a leftover, something someone thought was a good idea, uh, but you know, turns out to be wrong. And I, I was I was toying with something like, um, what's the Indian god with uh, lots of arms, the Hindu one? Vishnu. Yeah, Vishnu. I, you know, so, so you know, someone someone thought it would be you know really good to have somebody with lots of arms and genetically engineered it, and then of course you grow up and actually it's not actually that good I an idea, and you're just a one-off genetic creature. Okay, good, cool. That sounds interesting. Okay, good. Uh, others. So, all right, I'm thinking. Um, I was a cop who was completely. Um, unmodified, completely normal and human and biologic, but the department issued a new policy that allowed them to um, have some sort of rights to our consciousness. So I died <laughs> in the line of fire, and then they recreated me as a program and put me in a new body. Okay. Is it a, is it a robot body? Uh, um... Well, we're not dealing with the robot rights things. So we didn't choose okay. that. So I'm, I'm going to assume... That maybe it's like, maybe it's it's a biologically human body that was just manufactured and they basically downloaded uh, a brain state to it. Cool. Good. Okay. 
So I think I'm going to go with a concept that's kind of um, like the character that... Uh, the the sidekick that was kind of the main character actually of Dread the the girl who was psychic. Yeah, the psychic. Yeah. Um, only instead of being psychic, what it's going to be is that she was an orphan, so the state like had rights to do science experiments. Oh, great. So they put a chip in her brain that has like a really good pattern matching predictive algorithm. Yeah. So she has these psychic insights, but it's actually just a computer program that like theoretically somebody could hack or you know whatever. That's great. It's almost like you're uh, you're you're reading the network, right? Like everything, yeah. everything's hooked up together. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. Okay, Rich. This might be too much, but but uh, what what if um, what if I'm playing a cop who actually won uh, a contest and he's embedded uh, into like he's he, he's a YouTube star, so like a gameplay walkthrough guy. He's a cop. He's gone through all the training. Okay. Everything has been has been filmed. All sensations, uh, everything that he's going through. He's live. He's on camera at all sure. times. Yeah. So I would say I would say the setting's probably a little that's a little Gonzo maybe. Okay. To, wait, to wait, 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 Hold wait. On. We have we have a guy whose brain was downloaded into a vet room body. Yes. We have a guy yes. with multiple arms, but my guy's Gonzo. That's awesome. So no, no, no. it's because <laughs> because uh, because of the like celebrity of it. But what I okay. love about it is that everything is filmed. I love the idea that he's like a PR plant for the for the council. Like he's like it's almost not calculated enough is my point, right? Like like the other characters have this sort of like totalitarian vibe and yours is like crazy YouTube stuff, right? But like okay. I think it would be aw- I think it's awesome if uh, and I'll propose this alteration, you can totally say no, it's totally your character. Um, if uh, if instead it's like he's he's been selected because the council is trying to like uh, promote Archons as like there's been like some talk about how because of the election, right? Alea, Alea Carter's candidate has been talking about how Archons are like repressive and awful, and your their attempt to kind of like make up that like like be a PR face for the Archons to look good. Oh yeah, that that's, yeah. that works. Okay, cool, good, 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 cool. So fate's a lot like this, right? It's about saying like I have an idea and some pushback. But totally your character, right? And and like that sort of like very gentle uh, us kind of coming to some consensus about what's going to work and listening to each other's ideas. Um, it's it's difficult if we all climb up, but it's also difficult if we just accept everything everybody else says, right? So we're kind of we're kind of uh, working on this together and collaboratively coming up with stuff. So awesome, good. Okay, so everybody take a minute and figure out how do you represent that character concept in a high concept? How do you write that in like a couple of words as an aspect? Um, so that you um, so that you can you can represent it clearly to others. So I think Brendan's already got his going. You want to you want to read yours off, Brendan? Sure. Um, I just I, I named myself Anderson Sielchek, and I said I'm a reconstructed dead cop. Perfect. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't have to incorporate everything, but it gets us the gist of his character in like three or four words. Um, we sort of what I'm sort of trying to get, just quite a general thing. Uh, you, coming up, with, you know, unique genetic organism, which doesn't quite, it doesn't get there. Um, but I want to get across because it's key that he's the, he's the only one. You know, there's, there is literally nothing like him. Um, yeah. Because no one was stupid enough to do it twice. Right. Yeah. Can, so can I suggest uh, yeah. perhaps the phrase genetic cryptid? Yeah, that would do it. Oh, cryptid as in... Um, like yeah. mythological creature? Yeah. Yeah. I am actually good. having trouble putting mine into a statement as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's tough. The aspect creation is really hard. Uh, and a lot of times it takes... Other people can be very helpful, like you just were, to point out like how to get there faster. Pattern recognition prodigy? I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yep, yep. And remember, it doesn't. It, we all have an understanding about what those mean, right? So there's there can be a lot of reconstructed dead cops, but we understand Brendan's backstory, right? It's 
It's not. It's not like we're going to say, "Wait a second, you said reconstructed dead cop." That doesn't include that they, you know, took your brain and, and kept it on file and then used it when it was to their liking. Right? Like we all understand what we mean. Uh, yeah. So he he is an embed. He's basically just the PR, the face of of the department. So hmm. the department's face is pretty good. Uh, you know, PR Archon. Uh, <laughs> I work in public the shill? relations. The shill. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. Sergeant Publicity. Um. <laughs> yeah, cool. the shill seems like you could use one more word. Uh, the embedded shill might be good because you like that. You like that idea. So one of the things about playing Fate over time is like you kind of refine these aspects. Like these are just sort of rough drafts. So it's okay if they're not perfect. But we'll, we, would, we can continue to alter them and work on them as we go through play. Cool? Okay. So we're also going to do a trouble aspect. Um, and a trouble aspect is one that really falls into two categories. Either it uh, represents difficult or contentious or frustrating relationships, um, or it represents like a demon or problem that you can't shake internally. Okay. And the idea of a trouble aspect is your high concept is it can go bad for you. Like there's times where being a reconstructed dead cop might be bad or having a pattern recognition prodigy might be bad. But, but really, most of the time, those are going to be pretty positive. And so you want to build yourself a way to get fate points even when things are going smoothly. Right? So give yourself a trouble aspect that represents a relationship or an internal condition that makes your character's life difficult, just so that you can regularly go to that aspect for fate points, right? And make sure that you have, uh, you can sort of jack into the story in that way, uh, because that's what the system expects. And it's going to add some depth and complexity to your character. Um, I would also note that, like, if you already have an aspect about something, getting a second aspect about that thing is not super useful, because you're going to use the first aspect most of the time. So it's interesting for Brendan to say, like, oh, yeah, well, one of the side effects of being reconstructed is that uh, my memory is bad. Yeah, it's OK. But you can kind of just use reconstructed dead cop to do that, right? We want to add something new and different to your character. So give us an unexpected twist with your trouble um, about, about some, you know. And, and in fact, we've got a whole bunch of characters we came up with during creating our current and impending issues um, that you could tie to or other sort of problems that you might already be aware of within the setting that would be a good tie. Okay. I think a trouble uh, along the lines of there, everybody's watching me or all eyes are on me. Uh, so that's one of those ones that totally, if you want to, but you could actually use your high concept to do that already. Good point. Right? Okay. Right? Some in some ways, picking it again means like you really want it. Like your character's really about that thing. Um, kids willing to go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think uh, since we're all playing cops, it's kind of fun. I'm, I think for my trouble aspect, I'm going to go that she's like she's grossed out by gore. So like, <laughs> like you, she shoots somebody, but then like looking at the bullet wound is like really like she has to go throw up. You know, yeah, like it's a real problem for her. Good, good, good. And now the thing about that is it can also be invoked for positive stuff, right? So like. Right. If you're trying to comfort somebody and show that you're not just this like archon monster, right? The fact that you were grossed out by guts, they remember that you like threw up after you shot somebody, and they're like, "Oh, she's actually a good person. Like, she cares about people, right?" It can. It, it doesn't mean that just because it's a trouble it doesn't mean it has right. to always be bad. But it's right. a perfect trouble because it goes. It takes us in a different direction than just pattern recognition, right? It's this other thing as well. I was thinking along the lines of that I've killed someone under suspicious circumstances. Possibly someone connected to is it was it Drezak the Drezak yeah Drezak yeah um, you know I've killed one of his sort of lieutenants um, and I'm in trouble obviously from him but also it wasn't entirely above board or you know yeah. it was under suspicious circumstances so I'm in trouble from the department as well. Good, good, good. So you could do something like under investigation for blanks for 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 a shooting, or under investigation for something, and that implies a whole bunch of stuff about what happened. I like that. Good. good. 
So yeah, Chris's is good for uh, you know the sort of like uh, relationship aspect, right? Like it's not about some deep dark demon for him or some internal problem. It's about his relationships with others and what's happened in the past. All right, Brennan, you got your trouble bump? I think so. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going with um, psychological risk due to death wish. Um, I'm not about to shirk duty because that's just not how Anderson Sail Check is built. Yeah. But but at the same time, that doesn't mean I can't go running into battle and try and get myself shot, sort of, by doing the stupidly heroic thing because I should be dead, and I'm kind of annoyed that I'm not. Is it? Is he? Is he? If it's a death wish that's tied to being stupidly heroic, is that is, is maybe a better aspect that he's sure. stupidly that. heroic? Stupidly heroic. <laughs> because that can come into uh, some social situations yeah. as well. No, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yes, we like, will help you with the suicide mission. Right. <laughs> it's sort of like the Captain America problem. <laughs> the Captain America problem. Uh, Sir, it appears to run out some kind of electricity. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, we got Rowan and Brennan and Chris. Rich, any ideas? Um, possibly uh, he's he, maybe Hakeem is a bit too much of a perfectionist. Um, too by the book. Yeah, that's good. It's what made him a good candidate. But, yeah. Uh, causes I mean, him some hesitation. It also trouble. makes him a terrible candidate because by the book is awful TV. <laughs> but that's what the that's what the council wants. They want to show how by the book by the book this is, right? Yeah, I mean it it could be things like yeah, you you let obvious murderers go because you can't yeah, legally you can't grab them. So right, like know, that's what I'm saying like he he lets somebody go because he didn't witness them snatch the purse, even though the film got them yeah. snatching the purse. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, that's but awesome. To be clear, though, Archon by the book is not necessarily like a regular cop by the book, right? Archon by the book is like, you know, serial, like, you know, super totalitarian, super soldier by the book, right? Um, awesome. So, uh, last aspect. Uh, sometimes you do aspects like to create relationships or. You know, there's lots of different things you could do. Uh, just in the interest of moving us along, I want to do a tech aspect. Um, and the tech aspect is you're going to identify one piece of technology that could be embedded in you, part of you, something you carry, something that the department has issued for you, a piece of technology that really uh, your character makes regular use of and relies on. I think um, Hakeem has a pocket secretary. Okay. Which That's is cool. A, it's basically a hand communication device, or maybe it's not even a carried in his hand. Right. Sense anymore? Does it? Yeah. So. Uh, but it could be. It could be like a like you know in his. I would assume you have like Silicon City gear, right? Like helmets and you know stuff, and it's just like jacked in that he's got this like super advanced personal assistant kind of like. Connection to headquarters, right? Yeah, I love the idea the that, that the, the personal assistant connects you to your blog, <laughs> and you post blog entries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does the does the does it have a name? Um, I would, if if I had time, I would come up with some amusing acronym. But oh yeah, okay, good, good. We'll get there. Yeah, like like. Uh, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Hunter, right? And we'll and we'll we'll figure out what it stands for later. That's good. Somebody else jump jump ahead. I'll I'll, I'll cool. I'll ponder. Others, other tech aspects. I yeah. went with a hackable brain. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I figure she's got the chip in there. She can hack it to change things. Other people can hack it to change things. That's good. It's very versatile that way. Like upload new programs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like suddenly awesome. she needs to pilot a helicopter, so... I can do Kung Fu. That's awesome. Exactly. Excellent. Uh, I, I went for extra body parts, but I'm thinking, does that come under the sort of genetic cryptid uh, idea? Well, it's I think, I think here you're highlighting one particular part of that. Being a genetic cryptid is like 
has a lot to do with like your social standing and stuff and all that. Tech is like you've got these extra body parts, so you can um, you know lose one and it's okay. You you know like you you've got a whole lot of stuff that goes with that. It's fine. I came up with it, the technological relay interface, also known as Terry. Terry, good, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and uh, and finally, uh, Anderson. Uh, I took adrenal implants, so I can I can like trigger a massive adrenaline surge, so I can run faster and jump higher, and you know make my heart beat really fast and maybe die of a heart attack. <laughs> maybe if maybe. you're lucky. If I'm lucky, yes. If you're lucky, I'll die of a heart attack saving a puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, cool. Okay, so uh, we've got our aspects, which is awesome. Now we're gonna do what are called approaches. Um, so approaches are basically like your uh, if you've ever played Apocalypse World, they're like they're like Apocalypse World stats. They tell you how well you do something. Um, and in Fate Accelerated, the, the approaches that we use relate to uh, how like how your character does something. Um, so, for example, one of the approaches is forceful. Um, and if you have a very strong forceful score, it means you're the kind of the kind of archon who kicks in doors and grabs guys and shoots people. Dread is forceful plus three, right? Like it's just sort of like the, the, the cleanest path between you and your obstacle is a straight line, like, and, and that's just how you get things done. Um, if you are a character that is uh, more clever, then you may not knock down the door. You may come up with a clever plan to draw the people inside out. Okay, so we're going to roll, not based on what you do, like, you know, shooting, right, but how you do it. Oh, I kick down the door and start shooting, or I set up a very clever trap and then shoot him. Right, and so it's a it's a slightly different way for fate of doing things, but pretty familiar to anybody who's who's you know dealt with apocalypse world or other or other games like that. Um, so here, I'm going to go ahead and give you at the top the list of approaches for for this game. Um, we've got clever, forceful, flashy, sneaky, quick, and. I'm forgetting one, and it is careful. Careful. It's ironic. <laughs> okay, so you get one of these at plus three, two of them at plus two, two of them at plus one, and one at plus zero. So it's kind of like a little curve, right? Like more in the middle, fewer at the top and bottom. Okay. Um, whatever your plus zero is, it's going to be pretty tough for you to do. Whatever your plus three is, is going to work really well. Could you just run through, was it one of each, or so it goes? It's one plus three and one plus zero. So at the, at the extremes, you only get one, and then two each for the middle ones, for plus one Got and plus two. Got it, yeah. So this is actually um, a question for how fate should work and how you should think of a character. So often, you know, when you're doing an RPG, you think about... Um, classes and making sure the niches are filled. So is it worth it to think about, well, one of us should be forceful and one of us should be careful, or, or do you think that that doesn't matter? Um, I mean, I think, I think it can matter, like, in the sense that if you want to kind of cover all the bases. Um, but, like, most action and fate is done individually, right? So, like, you know, it's fine for you to forcefully kick in the door and then someone else to forcefully shoot through the door. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not, it's not a big deal for you to do both. If you kind of have in your mind a one that you think is, is your thing, you might want to point it out to others, and if they want to choose their own thing, that's cool. So do you have one in mind that you really, that you want to be? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I was thinking I might do forceful high, though. Okay. I figure with the pattern recognition shtick, uh, Clever is probably totally my bag, so okay. I went ahead and made that my plus three. Great, good. I'm I'm thinking that actually this this uh, shooting I'm under investigation for might be the sort of whole tip of the iceberg. So I've gone for sort of like careful um, as my top one and clever and sneaky as my plus twos, so that I've been covering my tracks for some time and it's just one of them obviously had a bad dice roll on. Okay, cool, good. It's also possible for your approaches to change over time. 
So, for example, you're, it may not be that you're always sneaky or clever or careful always, but right now you're being really careful, right? That's, that's where your character is at this moment. Okay. Yeah, and I've gone for flashy as my plus zero, um, okay. and forceful and quick as my plus one. That's interesting. The guy with many arms is not very flashy. <laughs> Good. Okay, so let's do let's do sort of top top and bottom, right? So, uh, Rich, what's your plus three? Took a plus three in quick. And what's your plus zero? Plus zeros and sneaky. <laughs> Excellent, uh, Chris. Um, I'm careful as my plus three and plus zero is flashy. Cool. Brendan. I'm forceful as plus three and careful as plus zero. <laughs> Excellent, and finally, Rowan. I am clever as plus three and flashy as plus zero. Excellent. Good. Okay. Good. So the last piece of character creation, um, a character creation with fate, right, is like part of the game. Like we've been designing the setting and talking about our characters, and this is all like part of the game. But um, the last piece is stunts. Okay. Now each of you actually starts with three fate points um, because your refresh on on your fate points is three. So you get three fate points at the start of every session. Unless you have more, in which case you get to keep, you, you end up with whatever you had, uh, right? So if you have five fate points at the start of a set, session, you don't lose two. Um, but if you've only got one fate point, you can go up to three. Um, in addition to those refreshes, you also have um, three stunts. Uh, and those stunts are basically ways to break the rules. Um, so, for example, Superman would probably have a stunt like faster than a speeding bullet, where he could spend a fate point and take uh, damage for other people. Right, so it's like somebody shoots at Lois, and he's like, I spent my fate point, and I take that damage instead of her. And by the way, I'm invulnerable, so it doesn't really count. Right? But like that, that would be like a, a good stunt. Um, there's two ways of thinking about stunts in Fate Accelerated. Um, usually one is, because I am X, I get a plus two to something. So for example, like because I am the last son of Krypton, I get a plus two when I forcefully overcome an opponent. Right, like I'm Superman, I'm just so strong. When I try to like punch my way through a problem, I get a plus two to do that. Okay. Um, the other way is to think about it as a story detail. Uh, because I'm the last son of Krypton, uh, I can spend a fate point to access my parents' memories uh, and have them teach me about a problem. Right. So if anybody has a stunt that they want to throw in right now, great. If there's something you already know that you want to do all the time, it's kind of going to be your thing. That's wonderful. But I would also say that it's also fine to just jump in and we'll start playing. And when we're playing, I can go point out, like, oh, this thing you want to do would be a great place for you to have a stunt. It seems to really match your character. So does anybody have a stunt they want to throw in now, or do we want to hold pretty much all our stunts, uh, stunts for during the So could I do a stunt like, um, because I am foolhardy, I get a plus two to charge in without a single thought. So you want to put it in the context of the approaches and the actions. And this is actually a good time for us to talk about the yeah. actions that you can take. Um, and let me see. I'll, I'll pull up the fate. I'm sorry, we can look at a couple. Just look at the actions. It might be easier to look at. Um, but there are four actions in the game. Um, two of them are very simple. They're attack and defend. Right. So if you are trying to cause harm to someone, you attack them. If you're trying to avoid harm, you defend. Right? And so those are, those are pretty basic actions. The other two are overcome and uh, create advantage. So when you overcome, uh, you're trying to get past an obstacle. And when you create an advantage, you're trying to give yourself a, a, a bonus at some other time. Um, so for example, if I throw sand in the monster's face to run away, I could be overcoming because I'm like, OK, I'm just going to make this roll and get away from him. Or I can throw sand in the monster's face to give myself the advantage pocket sand, which creates an aspect that I can use in other scenes, like or you know in other in other contexts. Okay? Sometimes it's obvious. Like I light the room on fire. Cool, you're creating an advantage. Or I watch the guy very closely to figure out what his motive is. Cool, you're creating an advantage because you're trying to discern a motive and reveal an aspect. 
right? But then there's other times where you're like, I punch through the door, right? So the question is like, are you trying to create an advantage, Brendan, in this in this hypothetical situation, or are you trying to overcome something or attack something? What are you trying to do with this action? Sure. So if I constructed it as because I am foolhardy, I get a plus two to attack forcefully when I don't think at all. Right. Great. Cool. Great. Great stuff. Okay. okay. Anybody else want to throw a stunt in there, or are we ready to move on? You you went for a create an advantage bonus. Is it's that an right? attack. It's an attack bonus. Okay. What if um what if because of Hakeem's uh by the book mentality when he creates an advantage by quoting certain laws, then he gets a plus two. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, so you can pretty much go, oh, um, pa paragraph 46, subsection <laughs> 3. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloody yeah, so, rules, lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is careful, right? It's doing it carefully because uh, you're paying attention to the small details. Um, and uh, it, it applies to any sort of careful, like carefully creating an advantage by using the part of regulations. And that's a plus two, or is it's that a plus a... two? Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. So I get a plus two whenever I carefully create an advantage using Department Regulations. And so you would name that stunt something fun, like uh, like like uh, Paragraph Two, Section C, would be the name of that stunt, right? Okay. Cool. Um, I'm I'm thinking um, um, defense something because it was defensive was one of the actions or. Yep. Defense. Of. And I was I was thinking like having um, you know I've always got a spare, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always got more than I need, you know. Sure. So that, oh, you say you've shot an eye out. Who cares? I've got three more. Right. So so what you could actually do with that is you could break the rules in a more interesting way. You could say um, because I because because I have so many spare parts, um, once per session I could spend a fate point to ignore an attack. Oh, right. So it's like, yeah, you get your arm blown off, but it doesn't actually do any damage to you because you don't need that arm anyway. Yeah, I like, I like that. So yeah. Cool. Okay. You'll notice that his cost of fate point, right? It's a big deal. It's not just like, oh, I get to roll with a small advantage. Mm -hmm. It's like I actually get to shake off an attack and not even pay the price. Okay. Good. Rowan, do you want to add one? Do you have one in mind? I really don't. I was going to kind of wait and see what came out as totally my... Cool. My shtick, my thing. Yeah, that sounds Go good. Go from cool. there. Yep. Everybody's got three spots, so you got lots of time. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's take just a two-minute break. I'm going to grab some water, and then we're going to come back and play our first scene. Does anybody have any questions about character creation before we take a break? No? Cool. Okay. Five minutes. Be back in a minute. Have you done much fight before, Rich? Uh, yes, I played. Uh, well, not much. Um, I have played it before. I played uh, a hack of Spirit of the Century a long, long time ago when there were tons of aspects and stunts and all that kind of stuff, and it was a lot, a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> and uh, then I played a little bit of Fate. When um, Ryan Macklin and I played some Hellboy-related like BPRD stuff using Fate, and that was that was pretty fun. We played for a few sessions, um, but it's been a while. That was before Fate Third. That was before Dresden. Um, oh, that's right. I did play Dresden for a few weeks as well. So I've played very short spurts several different times over the past few years. And this is my first time I've, I've, I've never played it. I mean, it, it sort of like evolved out of the fudge system, didn't it? Or, or mm -hmm. sort of fudge dice, because I played that, you know, when fudge was new. God, that was a long time ago. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, that I played it for one, two weeks, and that's my entire exposure to this. I, um, the one thing on Fate for me, in my in my experience, is that Setting up the game is extremely fun. The whole idea of world creation, um, the expanded part of it for Dresden Files was was really really 
awesome. Like that's my favorite part of the game is 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 how flexible things are. Um, to to marrying story to some kind of mechanics that gives you a feel that everything matters and boils people down to uh, to beats that you can you can kind of look on a sheet and then remember who somebody is and it has mechanical weight. I really like that. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's interesting. Cause, yeah, I mean, I've thought about sort of um, similar sort of ideas for um, 66, but I've never actually seen a system that sort of integrates sort of like the setting and be able to use the setting as a mechanic uh, rather than just sort of a bit of narrative in the background. Yeah, the, the aspects is really the, the sweet spot for Fate. The stunts and other pieces... Uh, I like that in Fate Accelerate is tying back to um, aspects, but I find that that's that's really where it's awesome, and that economy is really fun too. The Fate Chip stuff is is interesting as well. It gives the GM abilities to, you know, say, well, you said your character is this, so I'm going to use it against you, and if you don't, the and then the player can always refuse it, refuse that, you know, and pay a Fate Chip. I like that too. It's like, stop hitting me on this thing that I, I don't want to deal with that right now. Here's your stupid fate chip. Go away. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, way of controlling the mechanics, isn't it? Or well, controlling the narrative and allowing a bit of sort of give and take between the uh, um, players and the GM. Yeah, I, I think it it's interesting. Like, I was reading some of the aspects of Numenera, Monty Cook's new game, and he talks about interrupts and how the, the game master can kind of throw in a monkey wrench into a player character's life. And I think that Fate does it a little bit more interestingly for me in that there, you know, there's there's something that I can pay you and then you can turn around and, and use that. So you can even use it for a story arc, right? You can you can take a bunch of lumps, like I see, I see this in Dresden, take a few lumps and you keep building up those Fate points and then when, when it matters, you just, just bam, 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 keep paying Fate points and just hammer somebody down. Yeah, we were we were doing a session in which Marissa's character took out like eight mooks in one turn by just like blowing all of her fate points, and it was like that moment when Thor is like, Doof, "You're done!" Like, you know, just takes out a whole bunch of folks by by paying for it because he's built up the points. Cool. Okay, we're gonna get started here pretty soon. Well, with Rowan and Brendan be back. Okay, everybody's back. Welcome. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first scene now. Um, and uh, the first scene is going to be uh, rooted, or it's going to be the same scene that's that's given in the uh, the fake codex. Because we're going to just run right out of what we what we've got here. Um, and it's a what's called a raid on the Asumbra Arcology. Uh, so I'm going to read the sort of introduction to the scene, uh, and then we'll talk about how your characters, um, like what makes sense for your characters to be to be in the scene and how it works. Um, so recent activity in the drug markets have tipped the council off to the whereabouts of Drazik, one of the major suppliers of Hydra in Silicon City. According to undercover sources, Drazik has been hiding out in the abandoned Asambra Arcology, a plant community on a small island west of the city itself. Asambra was declared a non-livable zone by the council, after it was discovered that the developers used unstable Duracrete for the construction of the 120-story facility. Right. So, Drazik's hold up on this island. As the scene opens, you're probably in a council helijet flying towards this, like, towering 120-story uh, building um, that's, you know, most almost entirely abandoned, right? If there's anybody there, it's squatters and people who are hiding out. Right? Uh, and there's probably waves crashing up against the rocks uh, on uh, you know this little island. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of get a sense from people: where would you be in that helo jet, and who would who who would you want to be with you, and why would the council have sent you on this on this job, knowing that the hydro epidemic is a is a you know council wide thing, uh, it's an important problem for many people in Silicon City. What is it about your skills? What is the council expecting you to bring to the table? 
why don't we start with Rowan and we'll go back the other way. Rowan, why, what is your character doing when we when the scene sort of opens and why are you here? So can I, as as part of the narrative, build a thing that we know that my character doesn't know? Um, like, yeah, that's totally. why she's on the on the helo jet. Yeah, totally. Like it's definitely a kind of game where like you're thinking from like that fifty thousand foot perspective about like all the different factions in the city. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so then um, Mary Ann Smith was actually her foster mother when she got the chip in her brain. Okay. And um, and so she knows that Jade could analyze the situation and figure out how to disrupt the Hydra supply to the city if she could just get her in there. So she has actually used the influence of the anti-Hydra group to to put Jade in this situation. It's her first like real assignment, and she doesn't know that she is being used for this purpose. Good, good, good. Awesome. Perfect. Rich. Come on. We're about to arrest such a, a huge, high-profile criminal. Yeah. I, I got to be here to capture it. I, yes. I got to be front and center. So. Good, good. Uh, Chris? Um, I, I, I haven't quite decided, but there's sort of like two reasons why. The council's sending me um, officially because I'm really good at my job. I'm I'm careful. I'm 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 a good yeah. detective. I, I find the evidence. Um, but there's also this sort of like undercurrent of corruption and stuff where actually I'm being sent into a trap or into a situation where um, the the enemies I've made on the drug side of things uh, can deal with me. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Brendan. Uh, so. I'm being sent along because I'm a little bit of the um, last resort. Um, I'm so stupidly heroic that like I don't necessarily do the things I should, uh, and I don't necessarily do police work the way they'd want. But in the end, if it comes down to saving the city from a Hydra epidemic and letting the bad guy go to continue, uh, I will you know, make the right choice. And so I'm there to make sure that this is over. Okay, good, cool. Excellent. Um, so uh, I've, I've started a little page for the last scene. Or for, the last page of our document is for the scene. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put some scene aspects down. Uh, the first one is pounding rain, right? So as, you, as your helo jet uh, gets close to the island, the rain from the, the sea is like pounding on your, on your ship and on the island itself. Um, the, the structure itself and the, the sort of uh, concrete and everything laid around the structure is very unstable. So it's made of unstable dirt And there are a number of Asombra squatters around. So just sort of innocent people who have managed to swim their way out to this island or get a boat or get dropped off uh, to try to find a place to live that's maybe a little outside of the council's uh, you know, net, right? Because you're, you're actually outside of the city. Okay? Now I put a little box next to each one because those have a free book. The first person to use those aspects in a roll uh, will actually get to add um, a plus two to your roll for free. Right? Um, and it's a good time to talk about what you can actually do with an invoke. Um, so if we go back to our SRD, um, we can use aspects and fate points. And I'm going to post this into the Hangout chat as well. I'll put it here so people can follow through following along. But uh, basically, if you spend a fate point, um, you can uh, add a plus two to your roll by invoking the aspect. And usually it's something like, because the pounding rain is so intense, right, like the person shooting at me can't get a good bead, and so I'm going to add a plus two to my defense. Right? That's like the most traditional invoke. You can also invoke it to re-roll your roll. So if you like, if you just have a terrible defense, like you roll a negative four, on the fate dice, which is the worst roll you could possibly have, you can be like, oh yeah, but that pounding rain, I get to reroll. Right? This is the terrible roll I'm out. I'm not going to have that happen. Okay? Um, and then you can also uh, make things more difficult for your enemies or make things easier for your allies by spending a fate point to add plus two to the difficulty of somebody else's roll or uh, add plus two to someone else's roll after they've rolled. Basically giving them the plus two you would normally get for yourself. Does that make sense? Cool. 
Okay, so um, let's go ahead and open. Uh, I want to um, give us some sense of like the the island itself. So the island has, um, you know, a, a landing area, um, a like sort of little field between the landing area and the building, and then the bottom three floors of the of the building are made of this special kind of duracrete that's completely transparent. Right, so it, it, it has enough of a glass look to it that you know that there are walls there, but it's designed to be this like impressive lobby, except it's kind of falling apart. And there's like holes in the floor and furniture overturned, uh, and parts of the duracrete have lost their transparency, so they're sort of flickering. Uh, but there's like it's it's a it, that's that's you can see that there's like elevators and stuff in there that you, you may need to get to to go up. Um, and as the helija pulls around, the pilot of the helija tells you. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult to get close to the building in the helo jet because of the rain and the wind, and so he's going to have to land. So, what do you do? Sounds to me like, uh, like Rich, you might be uh, nominally the the person the pilot's talking to you because they're the, you know, the the. How, what are your how do your cameras look? Are there cameramen with you, or like what is that? What does that look like? Or is it like I think I think maybe we've got like a hovering eye, like a little drone. The Terry uh, cool. controls. Good. So it's like hovering around your head, right? So the pilot says to you, um, I can't, we can't get any closer uh, to the building. I'm going to have to take it down and land. Understood. No need to uh, put you in danger. This is a very expensive piece of equipment. We can, we can approach from here. Great. So as you start to get closer to the, uh, to the island, um, without, without really any warning, um, the field near the landing pad erupts with gunfire, um, and it looks as if as if Drazik's forces, if they weren't aware, uh, you know, like if they weren't clearly aware of you when you landed, you're, you're pretty sure they were going to be eventually. Uh, some, perhaps even someone has alerted them early that you were coming, um, and so this gunfire erupts from the island, uh, and and uh, as you start to pull in, you can you can hear it sort of like pinging and tanging off the helo jet. So, what do y'all do? I leap out of the Gila jet. <laughs> okay. Uh, team, it appears that our landing zone is a little hot. He's like already jumping out. <laughs> He's already jumping out. Excellent. Okay, good. So, uh, great. So let's let's have, let's make our first roll. That sounds that sounds like a plan. So um, this sounds like you're being quick about it. You're trying to sure. jump out before they can get to you. Um, and so you're going to start with the base of uh, what? For what's your quick? My quick two. is plus two. Great, great, great. Um, so you're still a good distance from the uh, from the the landing pad itself. This is a this is a big jump. Um, and of course, the benefits are that if you hit the ground uh, solidly, they're going to be sort of focused on the helo jet and not necessarily see you coming. So oh yeah, this is this is the big advantage. So um, I'm going to say the difficulty here is going to be a plus four. Okay. Okay. So. Brennan's going to roll on this plus two. We'll see what the dice come up as. And then we'll see if he's going to spend any fate points. Here we go. Oh, ho, ho, yes. <laughs> All right, good. Now, two things here. One is there's four. Remember, there were four actions. There are also four outcomes. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, it ranges from failure, uh, where you don't get what you want, or you get what you want, but it has a major cost associated with it, to ties. So just getting a plus two would mean that Brennan had tied. Uh, and then you pay a minor cost to get what you want. Or success, which is one or two what are called shifts above the difficulty. And so Brennan has a plus two skill, and he rolled plus three, so he's got five, so he's one above the difficulty that I set. So he's succeeding. If he was three or more above the difficulty, he would be succeeding with style, which would get him potential benefits. And in fact, Brennan can decide to succeed with style right now. If he wants to give himself, spend the fate point, uh, he would succeed with style and get additional benefits uh, beyond just landing on the ground safely. Sure. You want to do that? Why the heck not? All right, so which, which aspect is that tied to? What, how, which, which aspect are you invoking? I, I quickly just want to make sure. We started with three fate points? That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, three. Um, well, I mean, I'm thinking it's either stupidly heroic or adrenal implants. Because um, either my adrenal implants enabled me to do that, or this was just plain stupidly heroic, and it's sort of my shtick. You can yeah. 
Can I just ask, um, at this point, could he um, activate one of the scene aspects, you know, sure, and use the too. pounding rain to sort of hide his appearance or something along those lines, or he landed on a squatter? Yeah, that's, you, that's a good call. You've got it, you've got it. So this is the question here, right, is like, if we were thinking about this as like a comic book or a, or a, or a, piece, of, a piece of short fiction, what's, what, what happens in the dialogue, right? Is it like, or what, what does the next panel look like almost? Like, is it... Is it that he hits the ground, but the pouring rain is so much that the bad guys don't see him? Or is it like this amazing jump that no human being should make, but his adrenal implants take him there? So, which is it? Ben? Yeah, I like the pounding rain idea. I like okay. the idea that I come down and there's just this sheet of rain and you can't really quite make out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, Rich, you, you, you turn. Hakeem turns to look back at the guy jumping out and he's just gone. The rain, the rain is just pounding down. You don't even know where he went. Uh, who who was that? Who left? <laughs> Terry, which one? Uh, um, it appears that uh, uh, it appears that uh, is it Shalchek? Shal- 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 I, that I said Shalchek. Shalchek. It appears that uh, Archon Shalchek has left the Hillojet. Mm. Uh. Quick head check. Uh, who, who, Crescent? Are you still here? Uh, crap! I have to. Say. On mute. Yeah. But, uh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm going to be sort of like um, carefully, sort of um, going through over my equipment again, uh, just making sure my seatbelt's on because I know it's going to be a bit of a bumpy landing, and I'm. I'm definitely making sure my uh, wet weather gear is correctly uh, on, which, given my body parts, takes some checking. Okay, great. So are you trying to create an advantage to, to have some of this extra wet weather gear on you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dressed for the occasion, I think we can say. Oh, that would be beautiful. Okay, good. So go ahead. That seems like a plus two roll. So just go ahead, and, and it seems like you're being careful here. You're kind of mm-hmm. not jumping into action and going through your stuff and making sure everything's set. Okay, so what am I rolling here? You're going to roll four fate dice. Okay. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Uh, well, no, that's actually a zero. Uh-huh. And, and you started with a plus three, right? Because you're oh, a plus cool. three. And we're only looking for a plus two here because, because that's the base sort of roll for uh, looking for gear, which you probably have with you. And so you, you, get, a, you get a new aspect for the, for the scene to play with. Uh, we're going to add it uh, by the scene aspect list uh, as, as character aspects. And uh, what was your character's name? What, Crescent Moon? Crescent Moon, yes. Yeah, so Crescent gets uh, the aspect dressed for the occasion. Great. Love it. Perfect. Okay, so you can use that. And when you create an, a, an advantage, you get a free invoke on it. Okay? So, so gotcha. you, can, you can use that down the road uh, to... You know, to to uh, add a plus two to your roll or do any of the normal things that come with that. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, once free invokes are used up, you can still use the um, uh, you can still use the aspect and just cost a point at that point. Okay? Gotcha. Good. And uh, finally, uh, Jade, what are you doing? I am uh, watching out the open hatch that uh, that Cialtric hopped out of to see where the gunfire is coming from so that I can figure out what the best way for us to go into the building is. That sounds good. Okay, cool. Uh, why don't you give me a creative advantage roll as well. Um, this right. one's a little a little harder. I'm going to make it a plus three because you're, you're trying to evaluate things. Uh, All right, against... and I'm going to say that that's a clever approach. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So um, that's my actually, plus three, so I would start at zero, right? Yes, yes. Um, that is correct. And actually... <laughs> One more thing, I'm going to spend... So I get three, four fate points, because okay. there are four of you. Um, and these are designed to basically increase the difficulty of... Like, my NPCs can use them, or, in this case, I'm going to spend one of them to uh, increase the difficulty of this roll, which would normally be a three, to a five, because of your pound, the pounding rain. It's so difficult to see outside. Okay. Did, did I get lost? Yeah, I'm just. I was just thinking about something real. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah. 
No, 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 it's fine. I just want to make sure I didn't fuzz out. Had one of those mental math moments. Um, just a suggestion. Um, the squatters there, and you're wide into the net. There's bound to be one blogging or something right at this moment whose information you can draw on. Ah, that's pretty clever. <laughs> that I love that. All right, so I'm going to spend that fate point then to uh, to activate my hackable brain. Well, you don't have to spend it. Yet. Or, I mean, gonna, sorry. You you actually just roll first, and okay. then we'll see how many points you need to make it up. Awesome. All right. So, I'm gonna need three. No, well, no, because because remember, you're careful plus what, what's your careful? Plus so three. Clever. You're clever plus three, right? So right. you start with a plus three, and then you've got another plus two in the roll because you your roll is a plus two. All right. So, so I see the difficulty at five. You already have five, so you tied. If you want to succeed, then you can use your use an aspect. You know what? I am willing to pay a minor cost. Okay, cool, cool. I feel like okay. that's good for narrative. Yeah, okay, so you're going to pay a minor cost. Um, let's see, what, what kind of minor cost makes a good, a good, uh, a good, good idea here? Okay, so I'm going to try to lay some sort of fictional groundwork. Um, so as you, uh, as you like, uh, go through the patterns, right, you're, like, looking at where the fire's coming from, and you're sort of evaluating the, the sort of field... Um, you get you you can in your brain kind of like see the path that you need to cut through to get to the 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 uh, arcology with the least amount of gunfire uh, once you hit the landing pad and yet you also like get this like quick flash of like your adopted mother's face right um, okay and like this this word that she says that sort of echoes through your brain for a second and then like it's back to normal like you kind of blink. And you don't remember what the word was, but you remember it was very important. And then you're sort of like back in it, like the pounding rain hitting the helo jet. Okay. Cool. Um, and so then at the at the end of that, as I figure it out, I'm going to kind of trace it out onto a tablet so that it'll be uploaded to Terry so that camera guy can go first. That sounds excellent. Good. Okay. So, uh, Hakeem, as the landing, as, the, as you get close to the landing pad, and the, the gunfire is still, you know, hitting the helicopter, what do you do? Hmm. P- perhaps you shouldn't land. Uh, I, I think we should follow Anders, uh, Officer uh, Sielchek's advice, um, and we go ahead and exit the vehicle. Okay. So I recommend that we exit the vehicle, everyone. You want us to jump? That, that's, yes. Do you, do we have parachutes? No. We're in a helicopter. Helicopter lands. Oh, I'm bailing out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so probably your Archons, you're close enough that it's not that far. Remember, Selchik jumped way early, right, to get to get to the bad guys as quickly as possible. Um, I don't think I'll probably even make you roll, right? The, the helo jet kind of pulls up, and it's sort of hovering there, and there's gunfire and stuff, and the, the three of you can jump out without too much trouble. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm tapping the pilot on the, sho- on the shoulder and pointing to the ground. And I know I'm not <laughs> moving till it, 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 it's, it's level and flat. Okay, and great. Then I'm going to carefully get out. Okay, cool. So here's what we're going to do. At this point, uh, we've had a couple of actions taken. We're going to go in. I mean, Sialcek's going to start shooting at people, I would assume. Uh, we're going to go into what's called a conflict, okay? Uh, and a conflict is that everybody's going to get to take a turn. It's like kind of like a round. Um, but we use a, an action order. Uh, if you've ever played Marvel, it's the same action we were using Marvel, um, which is that uh, everybody, when they go, they get to pick who goes next. And one of the things they have to pick is when the bad guys go. So, so you have to eventually nominate the bad guys as the people who go. Um, if you wait for the bad guys to go last, then remember that whoever goes last gets to pick who goes first. So if you decide, like, yeah, we'll just leave these guys till the end, then they might pick themselves to go at the top of the next round. Okay. So I think probably Selchuk has done the work to go first. So let's have him decide. Uh, we'll, we'll see what he wants to do. Um, there are a couple of zones here. I'm trying to think of the best way to draw on here. Can I insert shapes? I don't know. You may want to draw. just open a new drawing. And it's really easy if you actually have a drawing. Drawing shapes is a little problematic on Google Docs. Uh, notepad I found. Oh, okay, let's see. It says that I can do... Um, we'll do a couple of different quick 
Uh, okay, I can do this. Then we'll insert it. Just want to add in just like a couple shapes uh, for zones. And yeah, that should do it. We'll see if it will insert them. Ta da! Did it work? Yep. Cool. So the circle on the left is the landing zone. The thing in the middle is the arcology, which kind of is, goes over both sides of the island. And then the island is split up into two zones by the, uh, by the, by the building itself. Okay? That makes sense, everybody? Cool. Crossing from one zone to the next doesn't take any actions. But if you want to go more than one zone at a time, you've got to take an action to do it. Okay? Okay, so, Brennan, you've landed... Uh, in that in this zone uh, around the landing pad where there are probably maybe six guys shooting at the helicopter there, sure. there's two groups one group of three and uh, two groups of three basically sure uh, yeah so um, <laughs> I go charging through the rain towards one of them, and I want to grab his gun, beat him in the head with the muzzle, or the, the barrel, and then turn it on one of the others. <laughs> Psychopathic killer. Great. Okay. <laughs> Stupidly heroic. Thank you. Stupidly heroic. Great. Okay, good. So um, these guys, uh, mom one, you're going to try to grab one of them and beat him over the head. Wonderful. So that sounds forceful to me. Sure. But you just, sure, you might have snuck up on them, but all the sneaking is... Over. Done with sneaking. Punching in the head. Head punching, yes. Great. So he's going to roll against you. So go ahead and roll an owl. Okie dokie. I... Ooh. So I rolled a total of a minus one. So I'm... I had a forceful plus two, so I'm at a two. You have a forceful plus two, you said? I have a forceful plus three, sorry. Plus I have three, a forceful right. plus three minus one, so I'm at a two. Great, and um, my my guys, uh, they don't have skills, really. They have um, what are called skill modes. So one of the things that these guys are good at is uh, they, they actually have a plus three for shooting at council forces. So they don't get, like, clever mm -hmm. or careful or anything like that. Any time they're shooting at you, it's a plus three, okay? Got it. But any time they're dodging your fire, they're only at a plus one. Okay, so they're they're better at shooting at you than they are at dodging fire. Sure. I think in this case, because you're just rushing at them, they're just shooting at you. That's their that's sure. their that's their defense here. It's just to shoot back. Um, and so uh, let me bring up my dice stream app. So three four. So here's my roll. Okay, so I am at a one. <laughs> Not good. Okay, so uh, Brennan, you're at a two. Yes. And I'm at a one. Okay. So you'll inflict one hit of stress. And there there are two other things that I want to make sure about. Uh, so last time I had I had a three over them. Uh, so that was... Oh, sorry. So you should have also received a boost. Right? right. In addition to, like, you snuck up on them, you also get a boost. And a boost is a one-time use aspect. So right. what, what would you have wanted that one-time use aspect to be? Maybe, like, got the drop on them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like got the drop on them. That's perfect. Okay. And do you want to use it right now? Uh, sure, because that'll boost me up to a plus three again. Yep. So you'll have a plus three on your roll. And the other part would be a stunt and adjudicating whether or not it applies, which is the foolhardy. I get plus two to attack forcefully when I don't think at all. Uh, um, yeah, I think that counts here. You you expose yourself to danger. You could have snuck up on them, but you just jumped in. So that actually gives you, what, like a plus five? Totally, yeah. Killing all my feeds. <laughs> okay, so here's how this works. Um, each of these guys has two stress boxes. If you fill the stress boxes, they're out. They just, that, that they just go down, okay? Um, and so as it stands, Brendan has rolled a minus one, but he had a plus three to begin with, so he's got a plus two. He used his boost to make it a plus four, and then he uh, used his stunt to make it a plus six. Whereas my guys started with a plus three, rolled a negative two down to a one, and so they're comparing their one to Brendan's six, and therefore they take five, basically five points of damage. So um, 
my guys are like, yeah, just stop, stop promoting right next to your little arms. Okay. Uh, my guys, they're, they're tougher than that. So I'm going to spend one of my fate points because I, I do have a couple fate points left. Uh, I'm going to spend one of my fate points to invoke their aspect uh, smarter than they look. Right. So, Brendan, when you got the drop on them, uh, and then grab one and like hit him in the head with your pistol. The other two, uh, like basically knew you were coming and and sort of like moved out of the way. And when you reach for one, he's not there. Uh, and they instead start shooting back at you, which you dodge, but uh, but you know they're, they're out of your grasp for the most part. So do you want to spend any more fate points, or does anybody else want to spend fate points? The one other question I want to make sure is. Um, do you generate that plus three advantage on everything, or just uh, certain rolls, or does it count on attack rolls? So for attack rolls, um, the the way that it works uh, is that you can take a lower shift, like you can shift it down by one in order to get a, a boost. So for example, if you did two points of damage instead of three, you get a boost. Okay, and the boost is a one-time aspect that I can yeah. use. Um, Do you want to use that? Sure, because then, okay. yeah, I still take out one guy, and yep. then I'll get a boost. Yeah, that what sounds good to me. What would you like the boost to be? Um, can, so it can be an aspect that describes them, right? Yep. Uh, so can I go with um, Terrified? <laughs> sure, that's totally fine. Uh, this, the guy came out of friggin' nowhere? Yep. I would say Terrified Goons is a better aspect of this goons, player. And I usually put a little B by it so that it's clear that it's a, uh, it's a boost. Okay? Awesome. So, who gets to go next? Um, hmm. Well, Hakim was talking about jumping out, and I endorse that kind of activity. So, <laughs> go for it. Cool. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll be jumping out of the helo. I was in the like the passenger side, the cockpit front thingy part. Yeah. So you put your own technical name for it. So uh, I think that he he drops down to the little like the little rudder type ski thing at the bottom of the helo and and pushes off and tries to jump down onto a goon. Great, great. So there's this yeah. uh, second group of of uh, goons that is, that are open fire. And you're sort of using the uh, the helicopters to springboard off and land yeah. on them. Awesome. So is this just an attack? It's a straight up attack. Great, great, great. Go ahead. But, and how how are you attacking them? Are you shooting at them or are you like just grabbing them? Uh, that is a great question. Um, I am uh, trying to be a little bit flashy. So, okay, so I, I think that this is a physical attack. All right, you're trying to grab them. them and sort of intimidate yeah. them and stuff. Okay, good. Cool. So these guys are pretty good at standing their ground. So when somebody comes at them, they're they're pretty good at keeping from being scared off and everything. Um, I so I'm terrified. Well, the other group is terrified. Dang it! These guys are not. <laughs> well, just and remember, they're just because they're pretty good at it doesn't mean they're good. At you yeah, at them, right? I got a minus one on that, and uh, I was being flashy, so that means I'm at a one. Okay. I have. Oops. Hold on. Uh. Somehow it's not clearing after it cleared. I don't want to append the roll to it. All right, roll. Boom. Oh. Okay, I have a one as well. All right. Uh, the unstable Duracrete is inside, and we're not inside the building. We're, we're outside at the... There's there's lots of pieces of this unstable Duracrete around. Like the landing pad is made of it. There's sidewalks that are made of it. Potentially like small, uh, you know... Bridges and things on this island can be made of it. Cool. I'll I'll tag that and see. Maybe I, I knocked a guy and he he when he ever he takes a step back, maybe he stepped into some <laughs> unstable Duracrete. And then... How about this? So you you sort of land and tumble, and this guy this guy sees you coming and he takes you stand up and he takes a step back and he puts his foot down hard to kind of brace himself, and the Duracrete that's there just collapses and he goes off the island into the water. Right, because they're kind of at the edge, right? Sure. Is that cool? Yeah. Good? Okay. Uh, so that would be, you've used that one up, but you've given yourself a three 
and you've knocked, you stressed out one of my one of my mooks. Yeah. So, cool. Good. Who gets to go next? It's got to be Officer Lawrence because you know, man be pammy crescent moon sucking his thumb and sitting in the halo. Good. Namby Pamby Crescent Moon is nice and dry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Jade followed Hakeem out. Uh, she she okay. jumped out the open hatch that she had been observing out of, and uh, she she aimed herself in such a direction to try to use the path that she has plotted out. She's going to try to move for the arcology, and uh, on the way she's going to try to take out a goon. Uh, via a non-lethal method, so she's gonna grapple a guy like in a chokehold and knock him out. Okay, great. So there's a there's a third group of uh, of like goons that only has two guys. They're kind of like running safety towards the towards the the arcology. And so it seems to me like you're probably gonna get past the first set, and this you could probably deal with these two uh, closer to the actual the actual. Okay, good. Um, and then did you did we name that the aspect that you created when you when you finished your 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 is it just like a path the path to the arcology? We didn't. Let's just call it uh, shortest route. Shortest route. I like it. Good. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and make your roll to attack these guys. So this was probably. Uh, you were being you were you were being non-lethal, and kind I of coming at non-lethal. I I would say I would like to call that. Honestly, I would have to say I would call it careful. Yeah, because you're just you're you're following your path, and then when you sort of grab yeah. like grappling, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So careful, and then you're at a zero there, so you're at a plus one. I am. Okay, great. So, uh, my. My guys are probably gonna get these guys are actually at a negative one because they're sneaking around, uh, and my goons are not particularly good at sneaking around. They're loud, they they make a lot of noise and like to drop around and aren't very clever. Right, okay, so I am at a negative one. So you succeed by two shifts, which as it stands is enough to knock out one of the one of the mob, one of the one of the goons. Excellent. We will take it, and we will make the bad guys go next. Okay, cool. Bad guys go next. Okay, so Mob 1 is going to attack uh, uh, Solchuk. Um, and because there's two of them, the second one's going to add a plus 1 to the roll. So I don't make two different rolls. I just make one roll with a plus 1. Okay? So uh, shoot. They, they just open fire on you, um, and they're trying to, trying to shoot, you, shoot you dead, and they're rolling on a plus 4. Uh, so, Mr. Connolly, how are you going to uh, deal with this, with the shootings? Uh, not well. Um, I'm going to... Hmm. As they open fire, um, I'm dodging, weaving, and ducking and trying to move around, just trying to avoid being... Um, hit as I close in on them. So I'm constantly moving towards them and I'm just trying to pre present a difficult target. Okay, so that sounds like clever? Sure. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm rolling on a plus four. Why? <laughs> That's what we like to see. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no! Karma. Yeah, Karma. yeah, seriously. So, so in some ways, this is what we like the the, the sort of like <laughs> our starting position, right? Is that the goons are like sort of firing wildly at Solchek and not really getting close to hitting him. And Solchek, you're like stumbling with this body of this guy you just killed, right? Like kind of like trying <laughs> get to get off of me. Going. Right. Okay. Cool. So now what? Do you want to spend any fate points? Maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> um, so I have a plus two. You're at a negative one, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spend a fate point on adrenal implants. I'm moving a lot quicker than the average human, uh, and I'm gonna shove this guy off of me as well. You, you're gonna reroll. Yeah, I'm gonna reroll. Okay, great. All right, so let me clear that. Take away one fate point. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, negative two. Wow. All right. Uh, so that means I'm at a total of a negative one versus them at a one, right? At a one, yeah. Goodness no, sorry, gracious. two, two, at a two. 
They're out of two. You, the dice wanted knew you wanted to die. That's yeah, no, the dice are serving me well, so so maybe I should just take it. <laughs> Well, there there are still there is still a free scene aspect of squatters that could say knock some gunmen off balance. That's true. That's a good point. Or just get in the line of they, fire. They hit a squatter instead of Officer Cialdrick. I mean, there's terrible. there's options there. In the pounding rain, they get confused at their targets, and they hit one of these poor, poor, poor squatters instead of me. <laughs> you are such a monster. I am a monster. I wasn't anticipating this. <laughs> good, good. Okay, cool. So you invoke that, and that gets you up to a plus one? Uh, yes, that gets I me guess. back to neutral, so I'm a one. That gets my plus two? Yep. Okay, anything else you want to do? Uh, no, I think I'll take that. Cool. Okay, so you're going to take one point of stress. Right? Uh, how much stress do we start with? So you have, everybody starts with three, three stress boxes. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you if you uh, each each box of stress lets you uh, basically absorb as much stress as the number of box as that box. So if you have three stress boxes. The first stress box can absorb one stress. The second box can absorb two stress. But it's not like it can absorb two at two different times. If you mark it off, it's absorbing all that right now. So Brendan's going to mark off his first stress box. Uh, so the gunfire kind of like goes over your head. And, you see that there's some squ- like maybe there maybe there's actually a moment where you like hit the ground and they're kind of like looking for you and then they hear something and they turn around and start firing and it turns out to just be like this squatter who's living right. in this little tent. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Cool. Uh, okay. Mob one passes it to mob two, who's uh, currently fighting with uh, uh, Hakeem. Right. Because you jumped into their jumped into their midst and took one of them out. Uh, so they're also going to open fire on you with the roll of four. What are you doing? Uh, wow, so they're opening fire. So my, my, they weren't traveling close enough. Hmm. Okay. So they're, um, like, they're like trying to step backwards from you and shoot, right? Uh, then I'm going to be um, quickly staying in inside... Like there's cool. there's a yeah. mob right, so I'm gonna yeah, get yeah. right up in their face. Like I'm I beat one guy fell off, and I'll rotate over and get right in the grill of another guy. So if they're firing on me, they might shoot their buddy. I love it. That's great. Okay, perfect, good. So uh, if you are quick, right? So for Hakeem, being quick is uh, plus three. It's like your thing, right? Awesome. Yep. Perfect. All right, so I'm at a four. You're at a three. Turn roll. So I'm at a three. I am at a three as well. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, what would you uh, would you like to invoke anything? All of the, I believe, all of the uh, free invokes have been used. Yes, they have. Um, no, I think I'll, I think I'll let it ride. You're gonna let it ride in tie. Yeah, it's boring. No, it's um, not boring. Because okay. what happens is is that if you tie, then the attacker gets a boost. Okay. Okay? So, uh, or remember, I can still spend fate points to make your life difficult. Uh, how many fate points do I have left? I have two fate points left. I am going to use one of those fate points. So these guys are uh, armed cartel enforcers, right? So as you try to get close to them, you see one of them actually, like, uh, like bring out like a like a like a vibro blade, like he like he pulls it out of his jacket. It's an expensive like custom item, right? And like he pulls it out and like runs towards you and tries to jam it in your neck. Once you because you're too close to shoot, right? Like you move too fast. So he pulls this vibro blade out and swings it at you. So now I'm at a plus basically plus two over here. Man, that's awesome. Now could I then say, oh well, if you do that, then I'm going to do this? Yep, totally. That's the game. But we don't. Um, we only have one stunt defined, but I have three, right? So would you like to define some stunts? I uh, I would love, as we were imagining him quickly moving in, that maybe he's he's skilled in Jeet Kune Do, just because it's flashy and cool and quick. Yeah. Uh, good. So what is a good way to describe utilizing Jeet Kune Do in the stunt system? I would say if you want to do the simplest possible way, just take a plus two to uh, quickly defend against armed attacks. Okay, that sounds great. So, um, 
Then I get a plus two, and we go back to uh, evened out. Back to evened out, yep. And uh, I spent a fate point to activate this stunt? Nope, it's free. It's true about you all the time. Right? Okay. Because you know Jikundo, then this is true. Right? And the plus two, if you think about it, plus two is what you get for a fate point, so you're basically trading a stunt for this thing you're going to use that is multiple times, right? It's like you're gonna, you're gonna. It's like a fake point that you don't have to spend a couple of times per game, right? Um, okay, so I'll take the tie then. Um, what do you guys think would be a good boost for my for my like minions here? Like they come in to try to I, get him and wrap I think him up and stuff. one of them managed to pull away from his martial arts attack and has a better angle to take a shot later. Yeah. Good. Cool. Good. Good. Cool. So I would say, uh, Rich, we could probably say like they're hand-to-hand -hand attacks, right? So if they're shooting or like within hand-to-hand -hand range, right? Because if they're shooting at you from a distance, then they wouldn't doing jiu-jitsu wouldn't matter, right? So it's because you were so close to them, you were able to use it. If they're so, throwing boards, though, boards don't hit back, so I'm okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So this this these guys got to boost uh, uh, angle to shoot. Nice. Cool. Good. And it's. Uh, once it's used, it'll be done. So, cool. Uh, and they will pass it to Chris because I've got three of them, and I don't need all three of them to go. I'll just have Chris go. Okay, I'll sort of um, step off the uh, helicopter uh, he, uh, and um, assess the situation. You know, all the mooks are sort of now sort of involved fighting one of my uh, teammates, aren't there? That's right. Yep. And there's a couple of mooks down as well. There's, yeah, three, there seem to be like eight mooks here. Three of them have already gone down. Yeah. Um, right, I'm going to um, just walk casually. Uh, fortunately, my companion here has laid out a good route on the uh, iPad, and so right. I'm going to follow that. Um, but I'm going to detour to buy one of the uh, bodies of the mooks. And I'm going to snap, pick up their walkie-talkie or little earpiece or whatever communication device clearly the gang are using. Um, and I'm going to be sneaky and create an advantage for myself. I love it. That's perfect. Yeah. Great. So that's probably a plus two difficulty. It's pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. I'm on plus two because that's my sneaky, and I'm rolling four dice, aren't I? Yep, always four. Okay. Uh, it's plus one, isn't it? And plus two for being sneaky gives me plus three. And you're good. You beat the difficulty. You're set. Uh, you grab their uh, uh, Drezik, what would it be like, cartel communication gear. Mm -hmm. And is that sort of like an aspect I... It's, an, it's a plus two on something in the future, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, you now have the aspect cartel communication gear. Right? So you can uh, spend fate points to declare things to be true, Spend fate points to add a plus two. You get a free invoke because you you succeeded on the roll. Uh, so yeah, you you grab the little thing and put it up to your ear, and you hear uh, Drazik giving orders to his guys like, you know, get get them away from here, get keep them occupied, right? Okay, and, and I will, I will uh, continue my stroll towards the building and getting out of the rain. Excellent. Who do you want to go next? Uh, it's a new round, isn't it? Not uh, quite, because I still have one guy who hasn't gone. Oh, dear. Uh, well, it's got to be him, then. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. it>? Brennan's <laughs> shaking his head. Trixie. Okay. Yeah, uh, Trixie this, <laughs> this mob is going to try to create an advantage on um, uh, Jade. So uh, he's going to like try to set off a like EMP weapon close to you to like shut down your electronics, right? Um, and I think just in the interest of uh, showing off what the system can do, I'm not going to roll for this. I'm going to offer you a compel to okay. have this, like, set off your pattern re recognition and basically put you out of, like, like confuse you for this round so that you, uh, you, you sort of, like, aren't sure which direction you are going to go and you have to stay and fight these guys. That's my compel. Sure. Okay, great. I'll, so, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> so you get a fake point for that. Okay. And I have added it. Good. Excellent. Cool. And so, I'm getting ready now that I got a little bank built here. Cool. Good. So uh, they get to pick who goes next, and they're going to pick the guys shooting at Rich. Right? So one of them is pulled away from your martial arts attack long enough to get the shot in. 
The second one's going to assist by just sort of like wrapping you up and sort of pulling you around so they get a shot. Uh, so they're rolling on a four with their boost. And what do you, what do you, uh, how are you going to defend against this? Ah, oh, that's, I'm going to quickly defend myself by trying to break the hold and move around this guy. Okay, cool. Shoot so you're just going to kind of jerk and like, yeah. yeah, get away. Cool, good. Cool. So, uh, run and roll your quick. This is not good. I can blow a fate point to re-roll if I wish. You can, right? yeah, yeah. Although you're only at a negative two, uh, blowing a fate point for the plus two might actually be a better, a better mm -hmm. use, right? Because it's consistent. You know you're going to get to a zero, right? Whereas mm -hmm. Brendan spent his fate point to re-roll as negative three and ended up with a negative two. That's true. So uh, my guys have a five. Holy crap! And actually, they're just going to blow that boost right now and make it a seven. So I've got a five just from the quick and the stunt, and then I'm at minus two, so I'm at a three. So if I spin a fate point right now to give myself a plus two, then we're even out at a five and they get a boost again? Yep. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Cool. Okay, so uh, you well, you like kind of pull the guy around so that the shooter, the shooter like kind of pulls back. He's like, oh, I don't want to shoot my friend. Right, and then you like break the hold, and you sort of are jerking around, and they're shooting at you, and you're sort of like moving quickly, and then I assume you eventually find some cover, right, somewhere to like kind of hunker down, right? So I'm going to give them the boost, the the boost pin down, uh, Hakeem. So they've kind of got you in a position where if you make any move, they're ready to shoot you, and they're kind of like calling over to their buddies. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to pass the action over to uh, let's go to to uh, Seljuk. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So they're the two guys who uh, turned away from me to shoot at one of the squatters that they thought was me. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm um, yelling at them as I come charging straight at them, and I grab each of their head in one hand and slam them together. Oh. Yep. Hulk smash. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Hulk smash. Uh, they are. I think at this point they're going to try to get away from you and reach those numbers. <laughs> you can try. Uh, but they're at a negative one for that. So, uh, but if they get away from you, maybe they can rejoin the rest of the mob. I'm at a negative two. Uh, so, what did you think that was forceful? Yeah, clearly, clearly. I don't think okay. your stunt counts because at this point you're sure. You're, so, you're, so that's uh, plus two for me total. Okay, and I'm at a negative two, so that's four. Yep. Do you want to use your terrified goons? Well, I don't boost? have to do it. I mean, I guess I guess logically it would go away if I don't use yeah. it because yeah. um, they're the terrified goons. So I'll use it just just to wow, use it. Cool. Then but. they'll just just knock it out. So you grab you grab their heads and they're sort of they have these little helmets on with these little microphones and you just like crunch them together and then they drop they all kind of like turn limp and fall the <laughs> Good, cool. Who gets to go next? Um, hmm. I you know what I want to pass it to um, Crescent Moon. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to sort of just continue my stroll uh, to the building, at least I was standing out in the shelter uh, from the rain. Um, but as, I, as I'm doing that, um, how did things like my trouble and high concept come in? Do I spend a fate point to sort of act to that fate them? Sure, so if we're in a roll, you've been mostly rolling against the environment. Right, so it's been pretty easy rolls to just sort of pick stuff up, you know, find gear that you want, that kind of thing. Um, when you're rolling against someone or against a target that you're having trouble overcoming, you can spend a fate point to use those aspects to add things to your rolls. Um, but you can also, and this is worth noting, you can also self-compel. You can say, I want this terrible thing to happen to me, so I'm going to go ahead and take a fate point now. There's nothing that says you can't self-compel. So, for example, if 
uh, you want, or, so here's, here's an example. So as you're getting close to the building, right, this large hulking guy steps out of the building uh, from, the, from the bottom floor into the rain. He's got piercings and tattoos all over him. I imagine he looks a little bit like, I don't know, like Vin Diesel or something, right? Like, like super intimidating and like big, right? Uh, and, he, and, he, and he looks over the, like, sort of the battlefield, right? Uh, and he's got, like, some sort of, like, eye thing where he's, like, trying to look over everything. And a compel, you could say, like, I want my under investigation to come in. You could say, I want this guy to be friends with the guy of Drezix that I killed, right? So that he, he, not just, like, he doesn't like me because I'm an archon, like, he was really good friends with the guy that I killed. Well, uh, what I was thinking is that, you know, I've sort of hinted that actually the uh, his corruption runs a lot, lot deeper. He's just been very good at hiding it. Okay. Um, so I was thinking of um, that um, getting in touch with Drazek and um, suggesting for a suitable sum of money um, I could arrange the outcome he desires. Okay. Uh, or I could take out the, you know, I could take out the Jade, who's actually the real threat here, because he, she's the one who can actually demolish his operation. So, so what you could do is you could use the communication gear to just communicate with Drazek, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, that's what I'm thinking. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and you could you could do that in a role by uh, by just sort of like trying to um, create an advantage of um, like being serious about your offer, right? You're like you're like Drazik, we should talk. This is Crescent Moon. You know, I can help you get out of here. And by the way, I'm serious about it, right? Yeah, I'm, 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 thinking, I'm thinking of using the fate to say that I've already got a relationship, that, you know, he knows we oh, can do business. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, so spend a fate point. You're going to declare that you're under investigation. You mm -hmm. and, and we're actually even saying, like, maybe you killed this guy because Drazik wanted you to, right? And, yeah. And that's great. Okay, cool. So, uh, so yeah, you're striding up towards the building. I think that's probably a good turn. Like you declare that you have this relationship with him, and you see this guy step out of the building. Uh, you know that his name is Grafton. He's one of uh, one of Drazik's enforcers, and Grafton waves at you, kind of like, you know, hmm. like you know, greets you as you get closer to him. Yeah, and um... so Chris, I'm going to offer you a compel that Jade sees you communicating with Grafton. Because you're under investigation, right? You're suspicious. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm. I'll, I will take that. Okay. Great. So Jade, you see that that uh, Crescent Moon sort of walking through the field doesn't seem particularly concerned. Waves at Grafton. Grafton waves at him. And then before you can react, the other guy's like on top of you, like trying to kill you. Cool. All right, Chris. Uh, I've spent a fate point to sort of activate that aspect, but I've gained a fate point because I've been compelled. Yeah, now you weren't activating the aspect, you were just declaring something true, right? But it's, okay. I, I, I see what you're saying, but it's not an invoke, it's just yeah. you're declaring a story detail. Yeah, good. Okay, so who do you want to go next? Um, oh, I think Jade seems appropriate at this point. Okay, good. So this this uh, this guy's grappled you. He's trying to get at you, Jade. What do you do? You're you're on the offensive, so you can do kind of anything you want. You're muted right now. I forgot that part. The That's okay. Thinking. <laughs> it's been a long week. What with the power not being on. Um. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go for the cheap shot and kick him in the junk. Okay. Good. Cool. You know, drop him. So that seems. Uh, that's. Seems, I think that's forceful. I think it's forceful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just knock him out. Good. Okay. So plus one for that. Uh, they're rolling on a plus three. Ready? Oh. That's. It's quite the hit to the junk. Yeah, it is. <laughs> My first decent roll. Okay. <laughs> so I've got a five. Oh, <laughs> I've got a five, and you've got a four. All right. Well, um, I'm going to say that since I'm grossed out by guts, I actually uh, specialize in unarmed hand-to-hand -hand street fighting. And so using <laughs> dirty tricks like kicking people in the junk is like a, a specialty of that particular combat style. And I'm going to go ahead and spend the fate point and take the plus two. Great, so that brings you up to a five, so you'll do one point of stress. 
it's not quite enough to take him out. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? Cool. I'm Good. okay with that. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so he comes, he comes at you, you're kind of like dazed by this like EMP weapon, right? And he, he's confused by that. He was just hoping to knock out like any sensors or things you had on you. But he takes advantage of it, tries to punch you, and as you, you, he gets close, you just like, bang, kick him in the junk, and he kind of like falls to the ground a little bit and reaches for his vibro knife on his jacket to pull it out. Okay. So who gets to go next? I think the only people who haven't gone are the mob you're fighting, Rowan, and Hakeem. I will pass it to the mob I'm fighting. Awesome, good. So he grabs the grabs the knife out and tries to like come at you with it, uh, and he's rolling on a plus three. How are you going to get out of the way? What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to use the leverage from having need him in the junk to sort of quickly shift to the side and not get stabbed. <laughs> cool, you're just going to get out of the way. Perfect. Okay, so I'm rolling on a plus three. You it sounds like you're rolling on quick. Yep. So that's which... plus two for you. Yep. Okay, so I've got a four. And you're at a two. Um, I will spend a fate point that he was standing on some unstable Duracrete. And okay. the, the energy that it took for him to grab the knife and try to throw it into me... Uh, Cause that particular piece to grind it against another piece, turning them both into dust. And <laughs> right, so he kind of twists, and the the whole rock he's under twists as well, and he sort of falls forward, right, with the with the vibro blade, and it's and it sort of like it skitters out of his hand um, and away from you. But then as he pulls himself up, he finds in the grass his gun, right, and so he he brings his gun up to bear on you because he gets a boost because you tied, right? Yep. Uh, yep. And his boost's going to be. Um, uh, armed and dangerous. Perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, that means he's going to pick Hakeem. Hakeem, you're pinned down. What do you do? I'm pinned down. Um, I'm going to say that I have a line of sight on Jade's position. Okay. And uh, So I'm going to draw and, and try to create an advantage for her. Okay. Uh, by firing on that mob, because I, I think I've got a I've got a line of sight there, so I, yeah, I think I'm gonna free just, her up. You can actually just take him out if you want. Um, you don't that have to create an advantage. You can just okay. Attack. Okay, I'll just I'll just attack then. That that sounds cool. fine. So that seems like you're trying to be clever, right? Because you're you're, sure. you're sort of shooting across the battlefield, like rather than engaging these guys, you're like, wait, what about over there? And like take that guy. Out. Yeah. All right. That cool. sounds good. Okay, now they're pretty bad at dodging fire. They're only a plus one for that. Hey, well, I'm only a plus one at being clever. So, here we go. All right, I got a two, and you got a two. I have a three. Three. Crap. Spend a fate point and he's done. Sure, I'll spend a fate point. Okay, so you're going to go from which aspect? Which aspect are you using? Oh, um... From which aspect? I guess uh, it's by the book. <laughs> by the book. <laughs> you know, you like, you like check your gun, you like do the thing, right? You put your gun up and you're like, Terry, how far is it? Oh, actually, Terry would be cool, too. Yeah. Be like, yeah, Terry, yeah, Terry, how far is it? 222 no, surely, surely, you shout, surely you shout a warning and it causes them to turn around and expose themselves <laughs> oh, more. Oh, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, okay. That's which book awesome. is it? Which is a better fit? Uh... Which I'm sorry, I, I can hear the question. Which is a better fit? Is it Terry? Is the aspect you're you're tapping? Yeah, let's use Terry. It? Terry's okay. good. I, I have her. I like the warning shot too. I like. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So Terry says it's 322, you know, 320 meters or whatever. And you take the shot, the guy just drops. Like, boom. Sweet. Right. So yeah. So Jade, you look up in the distance and you see that uh, that uh, Hakeem has like got his back pressed up against a piece of like fallen duracrete. There's two guys shooting at the other side of it. But you just totally drop this guy, and you've got a clean, a clean, a clean uh, path to the uh, to the arcology. So Hakeem, who gets to go next? Uh, let's see. Every we we're that was the end of the round. That was the end of the round. End of the round. So we'll go. We'll go right back up to uh, our crazy CL chick. 
Great. Hmm. So there are only the two guys left, right? That's right. Although now Grafton and uh, Crescent Moon are close together near the arcology. Pretty difficult for you to see because of the pounding rain. But right. You can, you, you can, out of character, you know they're there. Right, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let me go after the remaining two guys. Um, Are the ones that have pinned down Hakeem? Yes, exactly, the ones that have pinned down Hakeem. I want Great. to um, go ahead and pick up one of the guns um, that has been dropped by one of the guys I've smashed. Okay. And I want to go charging at those two with the guns blazing. Great. Okay. So you grab the guns up off the ground and open fire on these mobs. Go ahead and uh, roll. Oh, dear. Uh, I didn't clear the dice first, yeah. but I got a minus two. Minus two on top of your forceful. So that's three. a one. Yep. One, I'm on a three. Grr. Grr. Uh, okay. So. I will spend a fate point. Okay. To tie? You are at a three? Yeah, so, so I'm, I will be at a three. Yeah, that's fine. I'll okay. spend a fate point and I'll tie. For which, uh, for your adrenal glands? Um, no, for the stupidly heroic, because this is me, I'm attempting to draw fire, I'm attempting to draw attention in a really stupid way. Cool, good. So, so yeah, so um, they they definitely pay attention to you. Um, as you start shooting at them, you, you don't do any real damage, uh, but you do get their attention. What's your boost? What do you want your boost to be? Um, let's see. Uh, can it be Hail of Fire? I am charging at them with two guns blazing. Yeah, totally. You could also be like, you could also be Pay Attention to Me. Or, sure, that works too. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with Pay Attention to Me. Because you want to you draw attention away from... Yeah. <laughs> Look at me! Right. Good, cool. Okay, so who goes next, Selchik? Uh, I totally want to pass it to Jade. Awesome. All right. Um, I actually, now that I don't have a mob uh, on me anymore, am going to close the distance between me and the door of the Arcology and try to uh, hack the security system so that we don't get fried by the lasers or landmines or whatever it is that they've <laughs> wired up to the door. Cool, cool. Um, um, good. So what are you going to do about... Uh, Grafton and Crescent Moon, which are clearly like you know, they are walking towards the door as you as you sort of run up behind them. I am gonna try to tase Grafton. Okay, cool. I have so my gonna, police issue taser here, so yeah, yeah, you're gonna try. Okay, cool, good. So, uh, so yeah, so you you're gonna try to attack him directly. Um. Well, I am actually gonna try to kind of creep up behind them. And and then like tease him at the last second so he doesn't see it coming. Okay, cool, good. So uh, however, yeah. however, I am gonna make it more difficult for myself. I am grossed out by guts. Yeah. And Hakeem shot the guy. Yeah. And I saw the bullet enter his head, and then he fell forward and got blood like all over my pants. And it's right. I'm having a little freak out about that. Okay. So. Cool, cool. So yeah, so you're pretty freaked out. You're not sure what to do. So I think it sounds to me like sneaking up on them is probably not realistic then, because you're kind of rattled. I think you're right. I okay, think you're right. Cool. Good. Yeah. Compels have to have enough teeth to matter, right? So, yeah. Um, so cool. Take your. So I'm one. trying to sneak, yeah, but much sneak. like your goons, I'm I'm not doing it right. very successfully. Yeah. And then Grafton does the like Vin Diesel laugh thing. It's all like. Uh, is it is it possible for me to spend fate points and interfere at this point? Yes. Remember, you can spend fate points to make. Make the opposition help your friends, basically, right? So we'll we'll get there in a minute. So so yeah, you come up behind Grafton, turns around, and he does the like. He's like, really? 
and yeah, you just like you're like go right and tease him. So yeah, roll. Alrighty. That's a pretty good roll. Grafton's only got a plus one for avoiding gunfire. He's a big dude. All right. Well, then it. Oh. I think... Okay. Ah, that's hard. Okay, so you that was pretty straightforward, pretty forceful, right? It was, I would say. And so my forceful plus is plus one, so I have plus three. Great, and I have a plus two. So, so he gets teased, he, I think, he unless. Does get, He's gonna spend any fate points. Do you want to exhaust your pool? Uh, well, keep in mind that like he's a he's a more major character, right? So he has more stress that he can take. Um, so this is gonna hurt. It's not gonna necessarily knock him out. But it's gonna hurt. So um, yes, I will. I'm gonna tag one of Graffin's aspects, which is that he is. Uh, I don't really have a good one there. Um, what else do we have? I'll use the pounding rain. So. So the rain is enough that he he is able to like kind of dodge the fire and it only catches him in the arm. Like it doesn't catch him in the solid lay of the body. He sort of like pulls away and while you're sort of trying to track him, it's a little hard and you end up catching him in the arm. Um, and I'll spend my last uh, last fate point for that. So I'm down to zero fate points and I have a plus four. Um I will. What will I do? I mean, Grafton's a pretty nasty guy. I would say, you know, this is a good time to like, you know, spend some fate points. You know, get get him as best. I as you can. will. Uh, I will actually tag the the unstable Duracrete again. Okay. So yes, I only get him in the arm, but uh, he has now. Landed in a hole, and as he's trying to step out of it, it actually his leg gets stuck. Cool. And uh, he he wrenches something or twists something or or what have you. Yeah, it's good. Not good for him. Good, cool. So that puts you at uh, a plus five, right? Or yes. Plus four. Okay, good. Yes. So that's one stress for him. Any other any other fate points you want to spend? You can spend as many as you want. Like for example, um, you're a pattern recognition prodigy, right? So you knew where he was going to go. You knew where he was going to run. I did. I'm going to go ahead and spend another point. And, uh, oh, that makes it plus three. And then if you wanted to spend, you still have one more to go, right? Yeah, yeah. You can spend another one uh, and uh, tag, say, for example, um, the uh, hackable brain. So you, like, you know, hacked into, hacked into, like, the security system around you so that so that you, you actually, like, shut some of the doors. So, like, right before... You open fire on him. He like reached out for the door and like couldn't open it, and so you turn or you kind of boxed him in with your like hackable room. Yeah, I like that. I like okay. that a lot. Cool. So you're five up on me, which yes. is a lot, right? That's not yeah. good. Okay. So does anybody else want to spend fate points, Chris? No, I think I'll let this pan out. Okay. Cool. So Grafton, Grafton actually has four stress boxes, and unlike the goons, they're not just flat stress boxes. They're like yours. Each one is one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. So he's going to go ahead and burn his four box and his one box. So that's a lot. He can only take a little bit more stress before he starts taking. Oh, no, so he should not. No, no, he should need He has four. No. Yep, yeah, he does. So, um, so he burned through these two major stress boxes. He's much closer to taking consequences, taking like permanent consequences from this conflict. Okay. Um, and you you've zapped him really good, like it's so like you know he like shakes and he's like reaches down and pulls them out of his arm and like throws the like tasers down on the ground um, and like flexes his arm as he's like ready to like punch you in the head with his big massive fist. So who gets to go next, Jim? Um, who's already gone this round? Uh, just Sialchik. Just Sialchik, you and you. That's it. All right, I'm going to pass it to Hakeem then. Uh, great. So we've got me still pinned down and um, and Jade's facing off with uh, this new guy, Grafton. We've got the map. Yeah, the mob is still facing me. So I, I, I think I'm just going <laughs> to... 
I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to browbeat these uh these this how many are there in the mom? There there two. are two Just two, two left. left. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah threaten these guys uh to give up. Yeah. So I'll so I'll start <laughs> reading off uh, I think it's obvious they're defeated. So Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So this is probably forceful. Right, and that you're you're trying to basically get them to break and give up give up to your will. Or is it flashy and that you're making a big production of it like like, okay, boys, we both know you're just you're just done. Like that's it. They just put can, down the guns. Can I say I love the idea of him playing to the camera in this moment that is clearly like <laughs> actually a really bad thing, and all these horrible things are happening around him, and he's like reading out the regulations, trying to make it sound cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah that that's, sounds great. Okay, it sounds very flashy at that point. Okay. Yep. I will Mirandize these guys. So. Yeah. Exactly. I'm even. Ro- I'm stand. I'm standing up out of cover. Yeah. Good. 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 Love it. Okay. So uh, first of all, I think if you're standing up out of cover, right, you're you're exposing yourself to fire, which we kind of established that you you couldn't be fired upon, right, because you were pinned down, but you couldn't be fired upon. Uh, I think that's a self compel that you're uh, to your trouble. Cool. That you're doing okay. it by the book. So take a fate point, right, and make sure yeah. you identify those self compels because you gotta like you're, you're like okay. you know good role players do stupid shit for their characters, right. So. <laughs> so get the, get the fake points for it, right? Uh, it's funny because like people who aren't that familiar are like they they go after the fake points and it creates good role play, but good role players often forget to get their fake points for doing good role. So, uh, beautiful. Okay, so you're at a plus two for this. They are uh, they're they're not so like they're kind of at a zero here. They don't have a skill mode that applies for resisting intimidation, like so they're just rolling on a zero. Sweet. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm at a zero. You're at a zero. No, I'm at a two. No, I'm at a zero. Crap. You're at a zero. Can yeah. I? Is it possible to give him my pay attention to me boost? That, you know, he's rising up out of cover mm-hmm. when they would be shooting at him, but they aren't because they're shooting at me. Yeah, you can use your boost like any other invocation. Yeah, so take you it. Give him a plus two. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, Sweet. so, uh, so you get the plus two because it catches them way off guard, right? Perfect. Cool. Okay, so that's enough to uh, that'll be enough for one of them to set down his gun, but that's it. The other one will still they'll still have a fire. Okay. Do so you want to spend another fate point to get that other guy? Sure. I can spend the one I just earned. I assume. Yeah, yeah totally. I have one, but okay. yep, yep. I'll do it. I arrested two guys. Yeah. So the the second you want to use the embedded shell, so the second one's like, oh shit, is that Hakeem? Yeah. <laughs> totally. He like That's recognizes you. Yeah, right, exactly. So he recognizes you and good. And and emotional stress and mental stress and fate accelerated exactly the same, right? So it's the same as if you shot them. Because narratively, they end up in the same place. They're not fighting anymore. Right. So they shot them handcuffs. Right. So they, they put down their guns and, and sort of give up, right? And and uh you know, you, you do handcuff them? Of course. Okay, great. Yeah, you handcuff them drop on the ground. Good. Okay, well, zip time, you know, it's in the, yeah. I throw them down in the mud and I'm zip tie their hands. Well, it's the future, right? So you probably have like this, like zip tie gun or something. It's just like, <laughs> it goes, like sure. goes, goes. goes the, anyway, who goes next? Oh, who goes next? Uh, I think it's gonna be. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll keep one and call. Yeah, I did want to call him Grafton because that's his name, Grafton. Great, cool. Grafton's gonna gonna grab Jade and just choke her. Done with this, right? So he's gonna gra- try to grab her by the neck and lift her up. So Jade, what are you gonna do? Um, so I don't have any fate points. I'm I'm not using like a compel or a, an invoke here, but yeah. we established earlier that she had already hacked the net and kind of figured out how he's gonna move and where he's gonna go. Right. So she is cleverly going to remember that and try to not be where he's going. Great. So like he's going to reach down for you and you're already not going to be there. Right? Yeah. Advanced. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Cool. So uh, Grafton's got um, uh, actually yeah. So he's he's going to use. Oh, he actually doesn't have a very good role for that. Uh, yeah, you've just made him so angry that he's. Uh, He's he's actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up a fade point for doing this. He's a tattooed muscle man, right? He's not he's not the clearest thinker. Um, and he's actually does not have he's really good with a knife. He's actually not that good at grappling people. 
So Excellent. he's actually rolling on a plus zero here, which is why I'm taking the compel, right? Like he's he's he this character is not behaving optimally, right? He's he's so furious with you for tasing him, he's just grabbing for you. Uh, so he's gonna roll on a plus zero here against your clever, which I believe is a plus three. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. A litany of failure. Okay, so I'm at a negative two. I'm at a plus one. That's enough. <laughs> In fact, that's not that's not just enough to succeed. That's enough to succeed with style. So Excellent. Because you're defending on a succeed with style, you get a boost. So what, what would you like your boost to be? Excellent. Um, I think my boost is... Uh, I know his fighting style. Okay, cool. Familiar fighting style. And you're kind of like in the darkness laughing at him, right? Because he's, he's like reaching for you and you're not there, you're nearby. Taunting him. Taunting him. Okay, good. Who gets to go next? Uh, I think the only person left in the scene that hasn't gone is you, Chris, right? I believe so. Okay, what would you like to do? Yeah. So Drazik, when you contacted him, gave gave you instructions. He told you like, "I'll be downstairs. You can meet me in the lobby." Right. Like, so he told you where he was going to be. Yeah, and there's a uh, you know there's there's money at stake here. Yeah. Um, but I also suspect that I got spotted because you know I quite possibly literally do have eyes in the back of my head. And okay. probably spotted uh, uh, what Jade was up to. Um, so I'm going to sort of make a show of sort of like trying to grab um, this guy, uh, Grafton, you know, like I'm being a good cop and arresting him. But actually, what I'm going to do is slip a, a small but very powerful explosive device in his pocket. Um, because I figure I may be able to kill two birds with one stone quite literally here. Okay, cool. So first, uh, let's have so, you... So I'm trying to be, I'm, what I'm trying to be is sneaky. I'm trying to, you know, yeah. do, appear to be doing something but being sneaky at it. Okay, so first, let's have you spend a story point for, a fate point for your story detail that, that you know you're spotted. And it makes sense that you know you're spotted because you have eyes in the back of your head, but we've got to spend the point to establish it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, cool. Second thing is, uh, it sounds like you're trying to create another advantage here by dropping this like small explosive device into um, into his pocket. So it's a sneaky create advantage action. Um, I was more thinking of trying to make it a narrative thing. I, I I'm, you know, I when I want to use it at some point in the story, but it, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know whether that counts as a story well, or you a, want you wanted a, you wanted an aspect. You want there to be an aspect that says explosive in his pocket. So that later you can declare a story point that it goes. You could spend a story detail that it goes off. Yeah, right? and like, uh, yes, I could be pretty point. sure that it's going to blow him to bits and right. be right. someone cool. as well. And and because of the setting, we don't need to establish that you have explosives. Like it's crazy. There's crazy technology. Great. Well, that sounds good. I, I'm I'm anticipating invoking my dressed for. Uh, 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 what, what was my? Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have yeah. just the right kind of explosive because of the dressed for success. Yeah. So yeah, you can use the that. yeah, you can use that if you need to to, to make your role better. So mm -hmm. the thing is you're gonna to try to create an advantage on him, so he's gonna he's gonna resist that, right? Because he doesn't want an explosive in his pocket. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, his role to resist uh, is is pretty low, it's like a plus one. Okay? Uh, so okay. you're trying to be sneaky and he's trying to kind of resist you, and you're at a plus two and he's at a plus one, and go ahead and roll. No dip. Um, I'm puts me on plus three, and he's at a plus uh, two. Yep. Um, is that enough for a success or do I? Uh, well, I'm gonna spend it because um, I've got that. Uh, what is it? The um, dress for the occasion. Yeah. So you can that use I, that to make it a plus five. Yeah, and that's three, isn't it? Because I'm successful Yep. So then you're putting an aspect on him of uh, what explosive, explosive pocket, mm -hmm. <laughs> explosion in, explosive in pocket, uh, 
uh, on Drafton. And because you succeeded with style, not only does like no one see you, but you get two free invokes on this. You can use it twice, basically, uh, during the roll. Okay. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to blow them up twice, but well, yeah. it's, it's it's more like it's a plus four than a plus two. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Right. It's it's super it's super successful. Remember, with free invokes, you can use as many as you want. So if you've got two, you can use both of them. Right. It's not a big deal. Right. right. And that cool. I, I spent one fate point in all of that, didn't yep, I? Yep. You did. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Chris, who do you want to go at the beginning of the next scene? Um, as a quick question, he could pick himself too, couldn't he? He could, totally could. Um, hmm, there's some temptation in that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pick myself. Um, So uh, Jade and him are sort of like grappling at the moment, effectively, aren't they? Yeah, right. Well, Jade's kind of gotten out of his way, but she's definitely got his attention. Okay, I'm going to... Um... Um, well, I've got the comms gear, uh, so I can talk to into Grafton's ear. Um without Jade knowing about it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to say to Grafton effectively, oh um, go limp, just play along here. I've we'll, we'll, I've got this covered. You know, I want to sort of get him to go along and sort of like let him get himself get arrested so that you know I can maneuver him into some convenient position at some point. But as far as he I want him to think that this is all part of a plan to actually get rid of Jade <coughs> and do the job. Okay, cool. Um, so you're trying to kind of convince him to back down and go along with your plan. Yeah. All right, great. So that sounds like a, you're trying to cleverly persuade him. Uh, so go ahead and roll on clever. And he's you know not a particularly clever guy, so he's going to roll on to zero again. Uh, okay, so I'm on uh, clever plus two, aren't I? So four dice and roll. Ooh. Uh, I'm on plus two at the moment. Well, that beats my negative two, so you're you're good there. Uh, do With I need four. any more to make? Uh, no, yeah, you're gonna... you're good to go. That four four is a lot of successes. Right, yeah, because I was burn the communication gear if I need to, if if it gets me any advantage. No, right, exactly. That's how it works, right? If you need it, you use it. If not, you don't. So that's enough to succeed with style. So uh, Grafton puts his oh, hands up and. Well, uh, what I want to want is I want I want to like get his arm behind his back and sort of got my scruff of a neck and I'm sort of holding him and I say just yeah. play along, just play along, and okay. so it, you know, and I I just want to because uh, I did it with style, didn't I? So yeah. I want to make sure. Um, Sergeant Public Relations captures it on his camera, you know, really proper by the book arrest. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sort of, you know, you know, no question marks about my my uh, trustworthiness owner. Great. So you're going to get a by the book arrest boost for that, right? Because you overcame it with style, so you get a boost as well. So Jade, from the shadows, you see that, uh, yeah, you know, he's jumped into action. He grabbed Grafton. He kind of grabbed Grafton's arm and pulled it behind him, and Grafton like gave up and, and went down to the ground and uh, is allowing Crescent Moon to, to arrest him. So, Chris, who gets to go next after you? Um, let's have Brendan. Actually, wait, first, is there anybody else that wants to take a conflict action? Or are we done sort of harming each other? I feel like we're done. Yeah. I'd buy it. Okay. Yeah, the rest cool. of the bad guy. Cool. Yeah, bad guy goes down. Great. You haven't found Drazik yet, uh, but as as Crescent Moon is sort of wrapping things up, Jade, you see uh, Drazik is now actually is just is just standing in the middle of the lobby downstairs. Um. He appears to be unarmed. Well, geez. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I am going to try to tag him with a special, like, GPS chip from my gun so that we as law enforcement can follow him later and find out where he keeps his stash. Uh, okay, so he's not, um, he's not, like, running or resisting or anything. He's just standing there. So you're just going to shoot him with the gun in case he runs away? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, he, in a second, the Archons are going to be coming, and he is going to run. And if I do it now, he's not moving. I've got a better shot at mm. actually hitting him with the chip. Okay, great, cool. Um, so uh, you you step into the room, right? You, you pull the door open because you, the, the hack you put on the door is just seconds long, right? It was just, right. You open the doors, you reach in, and you shoot him with this, and he just stands there and takes it, like... You see it hit his shoulder, and he doesn't even move. He just kind of, like, flinches backwards and then puts his hands up. Then I will arrest him. <laughs> Great. So He's Hakeem... not going anywhere. He's getting arrested. <laughs> Great. So Hakeem and, uh, and uh, Sol- Solchek are, I assume, running towards Grafton, right? You're mm-hmm. finishing the yeah. arrest, getting yeah. this guy down. And as you sort of look up, you see that Jade has pulled... Uh, is pulling uh, Drazik around. Oh, she's uh, like frog marching him out with <laughs> yeah. like the gun behind his head, making yeah. sure that Terry's getting footage of her with the big bad guy while they're all wasting their time on the mook. Right, exactly. Perfect. Good. So, uh, so yeah, so he, he kind of, and, and he has this sort of smile on his face as you do all this. Like he's, he's, he seems pleased at this result. I, I'm, I want to. Um, I'm going to uh, get on the radio to our um, transport, you know, and say, you know, um, two two prisoners. No, we've got four prisoners, haven't we? Yeah, four yeah. prisoners to uh, collect. Yeah, good, good, good. So yeah, the last piece of the scene is the helo jet, like coming in over the over the water, like the rain has eased up enough for it to get closer to the building, and you make this call, and there's the lights, you know, kind of circling around you, and they and they they drop this like. Uh, this like wire that you can kind of string people up and they get pulled up into the air and stuff, right? And, um, and you, you sort of start, start wrapping people up. Um, and of course, you're all wondering, like, what is Drazik? What's the deal, right? Why, is, why did he allow himself to get captured? Why didn't he put up a fight? Um, you know, especially when Grafton put up a fight. What's going on? Um, but all of that we'll have to wait for next episode <laughs> of Silicon City. Okay, cool. Um, good, that was awesome. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I would just like to say, I, I, you know, if if we can get a closing credits uh, shot, it, it's going to be as um, Drazik and um, Grafton, and if I can arrange it, Jade are being sort of all in the copter, uh, helicopter. You know, that bomb's going to go off. Oh, just when I, I pop back to pick up some important evidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll probably at this point wait, right? We'll wait. Well, it would be it would be interesting to kind of go to the next scene and have it go off later. Right when it's yeah. when it's when it's well timed, um, but like to let the suspense ride. Um, but yeah, I think that's. I mean, that's like maybe the last scene is like we, we see Dre, you know, in a uh, in his pocket. Like we, you know, there's just this like beeping right in his <laughs> pocket. Of this, like, yeah. Bomb about to go off, which is awesome. All right, uh, so we do this. I do this after every game is a, a thing of roses and thorns, where I ask uh, one thing that worked really well that you enjoyed that you had fun with. And one one thing that you wish had been different, or just wish we did more of, or you know, generally that you'd want to do differently next time for you to play. Again. So, um, Brendan, do you want to start us off with a rose and a thorn? Sure. Um, hmm. The rose, I mean, and and. Okay. The rose was that I, I really did enjoy the, the part where we were creating everything and just specifically the current issue and pending issue part because though that element um, gave us immediate buy-in and while simultaneously not being um, heavy, some of the fake games that I played, like Dresden Files, um, you know, while setting creation was fun when I was doing Dresden Files setting creation, it, it, that was heavy. It was long process, not simple, and, you know, you have a really, really deep setting by the end of it, but that can take a lot of time, and sometimes yeah. you just want to get into the playing. And so this simultaneously had that feeling of creating a setting. We got to pick a new character for each of these issues. We got to pick one of the main issues that mattered, and we were also given one of the main issues. So it was simul- that, that perfect blend of, like, creating it and having it made that produced investment while also um, 
not requiring an enormous amount of creation right here uh, at the table. Cool. The, the one thorn I would say is um, we it was an awesome fight scene, and there was still some good stuff going on in it, but it, we, we basically just, due to time and due to how we played, we had one giant fight scene. Yeah. Like it, it would have been good to have some scenes of just the archons like interacting and and shooting off each other and like somebody saying you're a crazy asshole and I'm being like no cool good <laughs> for for next episode for sure yes exactly Chris or or Rose first uh, Rose uh, yeah I really liked the system I've never played Fate before so it was all new and. I like the way you can get boosters and things like that and advantages and you know that I thought it, it works very nicely and I like the setting so the, all the sort of all that side of it was good, um, but in some ways I did find yeah but going sort of like Brendan the fight scene did seem too long and actually there was more mechanics than I expected, yeah there was more rolling dice and adding things up than I thought there would be. Um, and you know, I, I, th- I think yeah, a bit of a actually a bit lighter on the mechanics would have been uh, nicer, so we, we could get on with the plot. Sure. So yeah, a big part of fate is like it's a very mechanics. It's always it's a very mechanics heavy game. Like you define everything. The aspects matter a lot. Part of the fun is like building out these things, and creating the aspects, and having them come in later. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit like Marvel in the sense that the action scenes are supposed to reveal stuff about the characters. Um, and and they're they're a little they're a little different than say like a typical action scene. Um, so it's this it's yeah the expectations are very different than what I think many people feel that when they when they play Fate for the first time. Totally, you're like oh this is actually kind of a crunch heavy game, right? That's a, a surprising feeling for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, Rich, Rose. I, it's it's uh, Rose. <clears throat> I think I took mine. I, I like the variety of characters. I thought it was neat that we didn't stress too much about why are our four Archons working together, uh, the plot of this big guy that we were taking down. I thought that was great for a one-shot. Yeah. So, yeah, I felt that the the kind of the the little crawl at the beginning and telling me what, where we're going and why we're doing it made sense. So I like that. Oh, Thor? Uh, I didn't get to talk in character very much because we were fighting the whole time. I would have liked to have hit maybe one challenge and then actually gotten to more talking and, and plot and stuff. Sure. Cool. Bro? Yeah, I, I think probably my favorite thing tonight was that we all got to have a really big impact on the narrative. Um, like, as we thought of cool things to add, we added them and and it was awesome both because the system allows for that and because we were all really chill about accepting, like, oh, that yeah. does sound really neat. Um, so I think that was really awesome. And then I hate to say it, but I'm going to I'm gonna agree that I think the fact that it was just one big fights log, like, I'm kind of excited to find out who Jade is. So I oh. feel a little disappointed that I didn't get into her more. Sure, sure. Um, cool, yeah, so my rose was I think you guys did a really good job of fleshing out the setting and adding stuff, like I liked your whole like being a planet with the chip and like the sort of broadcasting on TV and this like those things were not those are things are not in the original setting and you added them to it, totally um, my thought would be like, you know I, fate is fate is sometimes difficult to estimate how long things are going to take, right, and part of it is about like how hard you go, so like you guys get to choose if you want to blow your fate points and get through stuff or, or not, right? Or like make another roll, right? And and sort of like trying to tell me think about like what's the best way to convey like oh you can you can just sort of like get through these guys and you blow through your fate points right now, right? And and move on to the next thing. Sometimes one of the sort of difficulties of fate is there aren't a lot of mechanisms to convey to the GM whether you're having fun or not, right? That's actually it's actually a difficult thing to convey to me. Like I don't know if it's like. Yeah, you guys are having fun because you're kind of beating up on these guys and getting to learn the mechanics, and you know you're in a good place. Or whether it's like, no, I'm kind of just going through the motions. And I want to see where the plot goes from here, right? Like it's difficult to convey that. So um, one of the reasons we do roses and thorns is to like say, okay, cool. So next session is like just all talking with like one quick challenge if we need to. Um, that's that's where we that's you know it's good it's good feedback. So 
But anyway, thank you all very much for playing. That was awesome. I was very cool to see that come together. And I think we've got a good sense of where the next scene would go and some conflict within the group. And like, you know, I think it's it's a it was it was a good little you know two hour kind of demo after character creation. So very yep. cool. Awesome. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for running, Mark. That was no, fun. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of fun. Awesome. Good. Cool. Well, um, as always, uh, check out the Patreon campaign if you want to back the fake codex. Um, stick around for Splat World, which is coming up next at 9 o'clock uh, or 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, and, of course, we're here at 80 Plus uh, a couple times a month with various channels, doing game nights and other things to kind of promote indie gaming and indie creatives. And we hope you join us for all those wonderful things. Peace out. Bye-bye.